Bren Tong Cup is back with an incomparable prize pool of $40,000 and open to everyone. The competition will be divided into four regions, North America, Asia, Latin America and Europe, and also in four stages. The second will be the regional group stage. Starting on January 9, the 16 players from each region coming from the qualifiers will advance to the group stage, where they will test their potential against 16 players from the Clash Royale Elite. These 32 players from each region will be divided into four groups of eight, and in a round-robin format, they will fight to advance to Phase 3. The regional finals will take place from January 28 to 31 and will feature the 16 best classified from each continent. A single elimination bracket will determine the three representatives of each region. We will have a world final of the Bren Chong Cup for the first time, where it will be decided who is the best player on the planet. We will have live streamings in many languages, English, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, German. In short, that all of you will be able to follow the action. To follow all what happens in the competition, keep an eye on the Revel IMAR social networks and the AppGrade application. Thank Brenchong for sponsoring this competition and making this event possible. Brenchong Cup 2, get ready for the show. Get ready indeed. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the kickoff day of the North American region in the Bren Chong Cup 2. I'm Rich Slayton from Clash Royale League. Here with you, we already finished the EU and Asia regions for the Bren Chong Cup 2. And now we move over into North America. A worldwide competition, of course. Latin America happening also this week. You can catch that later in the same day after we're done with North America live on Cashman's channel on Twitch. Also, the replay is available right here on YouTube.com slash Rich Slayton. If you didn't watch the video that we just played, what is the Bren Chong Cup 2? It's a half invitational, half open tournament. Half of our field was invited pros you might know from Clash Royale League and other major competitions. The other half made it in here through open qualifiers that anybody could participate in throughout the world. 32 players for each region and the top half of those players move on to our regional finals. We've already decided our EU qualifiers and our Asian region qualifiers. So now let's have to figure out is who goes on from North America and from Latin America. And that's what we start with today. If you want to follow along all the action, by the way, when it comes to schedules, results, tables, everything like that, the link in the chat right now, AppGrade, uh, that's a link that goes either to your iOS or to your uh, to your other side of things or to your what's that called Android device and uh, you can get there and follow along with all the action you can also vote on upcoming on predicting results and things like that let's go ahead and take a look at the group a action for today and this is a pretty cool group overall, one of the more stacked ones. In my opinion, in North America, we have Mini Minter just came second at the $30,000 All-Stars event, second to Wallace. A great run for Mini Minter, though. Sweep, part of the top four in the world for Clash Royale League. Longtime veteran Colton of CCGS and Clash Royale League as well. And no candy, only Wi-Fi on the other part of that one as well. I didn't get through those names quite quickly enough, so we'll go through the rest of them here in just a moment. The opening match today will be Latak versus No Candy. Latak also playing out of the US of A. Modaz Light, Borlax, and Steven G all in the mix as well, and more on all these players as we get to their matches today. You can see a lot of US here, and then of course, the Canadian in here sweep. The man with the, the maybe the best hair and certainly best mustache of the entire group. So here's the format for this tournament, by the way, guys. We did have 32 pro, we have 32 players per region, four different regions, Asia, NA, EU, and Latin America. As I said before, half of those players from each region were invited pros, half qualified through open events. In this group stage, it's a round robin format, meaning all eight players will play the other seven in their group. Once we get through this group stage, which takes place in two day, over two days, the top four from each group move on to the regional finals. So four of the eight players you see here today will move on to that regional finals, four from group B, C, and D. 
the regional finals will play through. The winner of the regional finals will get $1,000, second place gets $500, and third place gets $250. And the people who get in the top of the regional finals move on to our world final, the grand final, where the representatives from EU, NA, Latin America, and Asia will all compete for the biggest chunk of that $40,000 prize pool, a $15,000 first prize. Pretty hefty chunk of change. One of the cool things about Clash Royale this year is there is more money available, more money on the line in tournaments than ever before. CRL alone is $1.6 million. There's the link in the chat right there for information on CRL. A $1.6 million CRL prize pool with about $75,000 up each month, plus that big pool there at the end. And then, of course, events like this. We already had All-Stars, which was huge. This one is open, though. So if you think you've got what it takes, there's so many opportunities this year for you to get involved in competitive Clash Royale. Speaking of staying involved, if you're just observing today and want to follow along with the action, let me throw the link in the chat one more time. This is the app grade app you can see on the right hand side of your screen going through some of the matches that we're going to have today. And this is day one of North America. So to, to break it down, we have four groups, groups A, B, C and D. Group A plays on days one and five. Group two plays on days two and six. Then groups, um, group C plays on uh, days three and seven, and group D plays on days four and eight. So to get through their entire round robin, they do have two days of gameplay. We're starting with day one here in group A action, and we'll get a lot of information out of this first day. Some of these groups have come down to the wire. Of course, in group A from EU, all five, the five top players all had the same score, and it came down to tiebreakers. And in some groups, you've had complete blowouts by the top players in that group. Of course, in the, the EU Group D, we had a couple players finishing way up at the top, including IMGP at 6-1. and one. So it's been uh, all over the place in terms of performances and finishes and how tight it gets. But we know that uh, you really have to perform well in this first day. A lot of players, if you do go down that 0-3 to start the day off, to start off your, your run, trying to come back and get up into that playoff, that contention range can be very, very difficult. Let's go and take a look at the chat here for a moment as uh, we are getting ready and waiting for our first match to kick off. Let's see, how many people make it through, the, through in the regional final for each region? Uh, I forget the exact number who from each regional final makes it through to the grand final, but I'm linking the rules in the chat right now, so I'll link them one more time as I did a minute ago. I'm linking the rules in the chat right now. You can go look at the rules there. You know what, maybe I'll just link. I'll click them as well so I see them. Oh, there's no co-caster today, guys. Sorry, I, actually, I did not mean to put a co-caster in there. Let me go and double-check myself, actually, for the regional finals. In the regional finals, the top three from each region of those 12 players will advance to the finals phase. So that's how it works. The 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 top the top three, a total of 12 players. Let's go ahead and jump into our first match. There are 16 players per regional final. The top three from each regional final will move on to that uh, grand world final. Here we go. Our first match of the day, kicking off the North American region. Latak and No Candy Only Wi-Fi. Two guys have been a part of the American scene for Clash Royale for a very, very long time. No Candy Only Wi-Fi, of course, famous for playing his bowler GY, not coming out with it here in the opening game. Instead, looking like it's going to be going uh, Cannon Cart Graveyard with the Mortar, and the Mortar does connect for No Candy to kick things off, so a good start here for the young man playing out of Arizona, if I remember correctly. I believe he's from the Phoenix area. And Latak's gonna have to just go ahead and eat those mortar shots on the left-hand side. Puts the Fisherman down in response to the Spears. Probably going with the Royal Giant here is Latak. We'll see if that is in fact the direction he's taking in this one. Latak is playing out of Atlanta, Georgia. The 17-year-old has been involved in competitive Clash Royale for a long time. Been a part of LA Gaming for some competitions. And of course, just like No Candy, has grinded his way through a lot of the smaller open tournaments. Nine eighty-eight on the left-hand side. So far, this matchup has been all No Candy. Looks like Latak not going Royal Giant now that the Mega Minion is out. So it looks like it's going to be Graveyard potentially for for Latak in this left-hand lane. And Latak is just not controlling these mortars. The mortar giving him absolutely so much trouble. And the graveyard does come in. Mega Knight not going to be tanking, though. 
So Hunter and Princess Tower will be more than up to the task of playing defense against that graveyard as that mortar just shreds the left-hand tower. Latak really, really did not do his best here of controlling those mortars, and that's the end of him in this game. Going to have to regroup and refocus for game number two. And you see, yeah, maybe Latak was looking at that giant bowler graveyard as an option. Cycling the Fisherman behind King Tower when the Mortar was in cycle, maybe not the, the greatest choice on Latak's part. Game number one of North America goes to no candy, only Wi-Fi. And yeah, you have to imagine a lot of these players are very nervous. This is the biggest stage that many of them have ever played on. You know, many of them have various uh, uh, event experience, some more, some less. But one tournament where you know that in multiple different languages there are thousands of people watching, watching you, judging you, in the comments, talking about how you play, and uh, certainly the nerves are high. I don't like it when I see one little eyeball watching me, so I can't imagine the pressure when you know that it's going to be uh, across multiple different languages worldwide, people viewing your gameplay with so much money on the line. So a good Game 1 win here for uh for no candy only wi-fi who's uh yeah giant bowler gui might have been an attempt at sniping that one let's take a look at some of the the chat here for a moment uh big shout out to some of the mods here sandy and gino sandy of course op mod she's been around on my channels for a very long time always appreciate the the support and the positivity that Sandy brings to the streams. And, of course, Gino, a big part of uh, American Clash Royale. So happy to see him here as part of this uh, this this kickoff for the Bren Chong Cup. When are CRL qualifiers happening? Akam Singh, all your information for the CRL World Finals, I'm going to be putting that link in the chat over and over. Not CRL World Finals, CRL 2021. I'll be putting that link in the chat pretty regularly today. So keep an eye out in the chat. You can go to esports.clashroyale.com to find all the information on how it will work. But CRL's happening right now. Your number one thing, your, num your only priority right now is to make top 1,000 ladder. Focus on that. Make that what you're, what you're shooting for. And if you get that one done, if you can get that top 1,000 ladder finish, the rest of it will all fall into place. But get that top 1,000 ladder finish. That's the number one thing you want to do. When will, Al will Cashman be streaming? Uh, Ladam is later in the day, guys. So you'll be seeing Cashman later in the day. There's, uh, that's the upgrade app. There's the, let me go ahead and throw the link in for Cashman here in just a moment. Once my uh, once my stream deck uh, wants to participate in my goals, AC is in Group D, guys, and we'll go through some of the gr groups later today. Right now, we're focusing on Group A, and looks like No Candy going the exact same direction one more time. Hey, worked once, why not do it again? And uh, yeah, there's probably about I mean the. If you're watching them in-app, then yes, the stream would be delayed compared to in-app because I'm getting a clean feed, and then I have about a 20-second delay on between that and here. I have it on normal latency. Maybe tomorrow I'll do low latency. People have been wanting it to be a little bit faster. I'm just trying to get the, the best picture quality back to you guys. So, more tra so far, it's graveyard, 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 graveyard in these first four games. And I love that No Candy isn't going with his signature deck, at least not yet. I believe that we'll see it at some point during this event. But, you know, if there's been one knock on No Candy as a player, it's been how much he leans on that deck, leaned on it like crazy in qualifiers. But of course he knows that needs to, he needs to diversify his deck pool. And he's been working on that. Working on it not just uh, in his personal play, but... Uh, in a lot of the Super League events that I cast, he would enter Super League events specifically not to play his go-to deck to get practice competitively outside of it. And look at this. Huge, huge connection for Latak. And first verse went with a huge opening for No Candy. Second verse, complete reverse of fates. It's Latak who's way out to the lead now putting the pressure on. No Candy began playing the signature deck four years ago when Bowler came out. Uh, just when he, got, when he got his first legendary, which was the Inferno Dragon. And this built a deck around that. That sound is not supposed to be happening. Give me one second, folks, to 
supposed to have mute all sounds from Slack, so why are you guys, why are Slack sounds coming in? That's weird. What is the no candy deck? Uh, well, you know, let's, I, the exact deck, I will go ahead and bring up. I'm sure we'll see it at some point today. Although my guess is that we're not going to see it at any point during this matchup. Game number two goes to attack. Let's go to No Candies. It's a giant bowler graveyard deck. Uh, but let's just go ahead and make sure I get the exact deck correct. I've seen it so many times and it's funny that I can't even remember the exact cards that are in there. But I'll tell you the precise deck in just a moment. And it's definitely one of those ones that he runs. Here we go. Um, I'll, you know what? Actually, I can do the deck link in chat. I think, which is kind of fun. I'll do the. I'll give you guys the deck link right now in chat. In fact, um, how do I get the? Let's copy that link. There you go. There's the no candy deck. I'll link it in chat at the moment. No candy's deck is giant boulder graveyard with arrows, ice spirit, inferno dragon, mega minion zap. That's the. The No Candy deck. He's been playing that now for four years. And like a lot of those decks, all of those quote-unquote one-trick decks, he is masterful with it. And, uh, you know, you, you learn those matchups pretty well. Hey, Cashman in the chat. Check out Cashman streaming later today for the LATAM region. He'll be your live streaming host for all of Latin America. Um, Expo saying, oh, I'm just putting nobody using me in the Brent Chonk Cup. Someone named Expo. That's actually very, very funny. Let's take a look at the chat here for a moment. Um, is it better to play Global Tournament last day? I actually don't know, sorry boy. You'll have to check that out. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a strong opinion on that one. I think that people are more aggressive during the first couple of days, but who knows? That's an important question. Um, I guess you'll have to answer that on your own. Do I think that duels will get repetitive in terms of decks, asked Sky123. I think it's going to be the opposite, um, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Hey, Mikey coming through with the 549 Canadian. Thank you very much, Mikey, for your support. Always uh, really, really cool with the, uh, with, the, with the support. And for anybody, guys, whether you're just supporting by being here, whether you're supporting by subscribing, liking the video, uh, donating, whatever it might be, I definitely appreciate you guys coming and being a part of this really, really fun event. Cashman streams on, on Twitch exclusively, but the replays are available here on YouTube. Cashman's been... Uh, nice enough to share the replays on YouTube for those of you who don't use Twitch. I know that Twitch isn't available in some areas, or doesn't work in some areas. So here we go, game number three. No candy, and my guess is he's going with Balloon Freeze here. Oh, interesting, I guess not. Looking like Lava Hound from Latak on game number three. No candy. I thought he was going to be going Balloon Freeze when I saw the Lumberjack and Baby Dragon, but, well, no, I guess he's still going with Bowler, so who knows? This event is not in dual mode. This is best of three, ban on first loss, the format for these games. Bowler Bar Barrel come out to defend against the ground attack, and it is Balloon, just with the Electro Dragon. Interesting. And that raged up balloon is going to get a nice connection here. What does No Candy have defensively? Baby Dragon comes out. We'll get some good work on both the barbs and the skeleton dragons. But they're going to survive. Those barbs shredding that tower. So a total tower trade situation. Now the question is, does No Candy have any way to stop the downhill play coming here? Electro Dragon down low will slow things down. He'll take a decent amount of damage on that King Tower, but not too much. But the Flying Machine, as it does take the Electro Dragon out, Gonna leave Latak with a slight elixir advantage and slight damage advantage as well. It's still just Balloon Freeze with the E-Drag. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Uh, Hisham, no, European, the, the, the regionals start after the group stage of NA and LATAM. So for the next eight days, we are doing the group stage for, I guess, the next nine days because we have one day off. We're doing the group stage for North America and Latin America. The Bowler right up front, so No Candy might not be playing the No Candy deck, but still finds a way to get Bowler worked into the mix. Final 34 seconds here. 
<clears throat> and the freeze takes care of that push, but Lava in the pocket, and the flying machine stays alive and gets on the Electro Dragon. This could be a lot of trouble here for No Candy, only Wi-Fi and attack. After having a really rough game one, had a great game two, and firmly in control here as we get very close to the end of game number three. No Candy has to survive this push here, and he's not going to do it. Not going to survive that push. Latak takes game number three, and the winner of the first match of the day. GG well played. Latak with a good come from behind win. And yeah, guys, I'm going to do my best to get the chat mixed in. And oh, No Candy's loss pick is so funny. Uh, he's gonna, definitely having some fun there, is no candy. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the chat now after our first match is over. Next match will be with us in just a minute, and that's going to be Mini Minter against Steven G. So we'll be with that one just a little bit. Jorge Almeida saying, why do players on lower trophies use decks of triple win condition? Yesterday I fought a guy using Balloon, Pekka, Pump, Golem, because people are nonsense. That's about it. Uh, Luke. Um, you love your content, especially the Mortar to King Tower activation video. More of those coming soon, guys. More of those uh, little, of those shorts, whether they be uh, little highlight shorts or tech shorts. More of those coming soon. I've been so busy with the uh, with the Bren Chong Cup. Haven't had time to much make much uh, ancillary content, but there'll be a lot more of that coming. Especially once we get out of the group stage uh, in the first week of first couple weeks of February, you'll we'll be seeing a lot more of that. Um, no Candy said on Twitter, he was trying to do a triple chin with his lost pick. Yeah, No Candy having a, a whole lot of fun here. Um, very, 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 very funny dude. And certainly uh, not taking himself too seriously while still trying to play his absolute best here. So it looks like Latinum is going to be uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern today. That'll be right after we're done here. We're done at 5 p.m. Eastern. Let's go ahead and jump into our second match of the day. Steven G against Mini Minter. Mini Minter, of course, coming off of that huge second place finish at the All Stars event where he took down, I think, about $7,000 was the second prize, maybe $5,000. And while Wallace was the overall champion, I would say it's it's arguably the, ch the case that Mini Minter's run through that event was more impressive because of the players he had to go through to get to that final. Of course, uh, he also did win the first of two BO5s against Wallace because Wallace had double elimination. Wallace won the second one. But solid performances from both of them, obviously. Wallace is phenomenal, and Mini Minter looking like this could be a great year for him. Steven G, his opponent, looking like Royal Giant against Lava Miner. Steven G, 17-year-old out of California. And this was the match he thought would be his most challenging matchup on the day, so... You know, there's some different ways to think about it. Do you get warmed up against some of your your not as challenging competition? Or you just go out and get the big dog out of the way early. And for Steven G, it's the big dog out of the way right out the gate. And guys, you will see both Ruben and Morton and all those guys again once we get to the... Yeah, Mini Minter is... No, Mini Minter is not Canadian. Mini Minter is of Peruvian descent but lives in the U.S. RG goes left in front of Dra Dragon working on that. Electro Spirit will not get the reset here. I thought the Electro Spirit was in cycle. And Miner goes to the back. Cage to pick up. But look at the Baby Dragon working on the right-hand side. It is Steven G with a pretty significant advantage so far. The question is how long can he maintain that advantage? This Inferno Dragon has been on the board for a long time, getting a lot of value. You can see now Mini Minter getting a pretty significant Elixir advantage. Gets into the burn. Gets a couple shots on the left-hand side. So Mini Minter Still behind, but now the momentum may be switching towards the Peruvian American. Fireball into the left hand side. Steven G, one of the the less the least experienced players overall in the in this tournament, at least in the North American division. Not a lot of competitive experience or high level competitive experience. He has won some, some small tournaments though. One of his highlights in Clash Royale is winning $125 at one creator tournament. Another one it was, was earning that global tournament emote. All players do of course love Picking up those emotes and adding to their collection. Here we go. Sudden death overtime. 665 to 1063. 
And Lightning does a good job cleaning up there, but Miner will go all the way to the back. This is a very, very important push for both of these players. You see the delay on the cage, trying to put as much DPS on this Royal Giant and stop it as much as possible, but one connection does get through for 11. Steven G needs to be patient here. He has this one, he can win this one fairly solidly if he doesn't overcommit. Good fireball there at the bridge, out of mini. And Steven should be back to an RG here fairly quickly. And there you go, there's the Royal Giant. Night Witch, Cage will come down a little bit late here to let as much DPS get on there as possible. That's the right play out of Mini Minter. And then here we go. The Miner's gonna come in. Good Fireball value from Mini, 477 to 411. Mini Minter has to be careful here too because that Royal Giant could devastate him very quickly. Cage is gonna come out late here against the Royal Giant. Just enough to stop it though. Good defense here in the late moments. That lightning, that could be the lightning that decides this game. Does that lightning win or lose things here for Steven G? Mini Minter trying to break through. Needs to get a miner on tower or something here. And no, the good game comes in. No chance for a block. And Steven G takes game number one off of Mini Minter. GG, well played. Steven GG. There we go. Very, very nice win in that first one. Guys, if you, uh, if you guys haven't sub subscribed yet, on behalf of Steven, I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and subscribe. Chat is going to be in the link here for you guys in just a moment. And i um, very excited that you guys are all here to join. Steven, what a great performance here in, uh, in game number one. You know, a lot of younger players, especially newer players in a big moment like that, might try to rush that, that, that ending, but no big rush there at the end. Very, very well played by Steven to go ahead and get the win. And a lot of people, how late am I? Cornelius, barely at all. You've missed one match and one game. So we are only four games overall into this one. We'll see. It's a lot. It's a, it is a pretty long competition, though. First play, Golem in the back versus Lava in the back. Uh, both of them I'm not a big fan of. So again, not a ton of competitive experience for Steven G. Personal best on ladder, 7.6K, 76.21. The best that he's put on ladder here. Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. And uh, we'll see if Steven G does go lava himself after seeing that from Mini Mitch. Probably not in this game. I asked Steven G a question I ask a lot of the, the players in this tournament. If you had to play one game, a BO1, for $1 million, what deck would you go with? And Steven chose Lava Loon as his option in that situation. <laughs> Mini Mitch are splitting archers to open up. Might be RG again here from Steven, what we've seen so far. How do I make the Brunchong character dance? It's an animated logo that was sent to me. So Snowball Fireball for Mini Minter, not the most common combination. But people do run it a little bit. And Mega Knight gets across the bridge here for Steven. Graveyard in with the Mega Knight tanking. And the, a nice poison there from Steven to get the archers off the board. And we'll get some value on that Mega Minion as well. King Tower activation comes in, though. So Mini Minter, probably happy in that exchange. Eats some damage, but does get the King Tower activated. Going to make things a lot more difficult for that graveyard time going on. You're looking for this stream in Spanish, guys. There you go. There's the Brenchon Cup en Espanol. We are in many languages for this event. 
Uh, is Mexico part of NA or LATAM? Even though Mexico is a North American country, I believe that for the broadcast purposes, it's with the LATAM region. Because, you know, there's the general Spanish language community. Graveyard in, Cannon Cart, Princess Tower. Well, not Princess, well, now Princess Tower, now the Mega Knight gets pulled back. Cannon Cart, King Tower working on that graveyard defense. And now a healthy Cannon Cart set up here for Mini in the right hand lane. And instead, Mini goes to the opposite direction with the Mega Minion graveyard push, poison in response out of Steven. So here we go, final 10 seconds approaching. And look at the aggression out of Mini in the left hand lane. That Cannon Cart's going to connect. Fisherman has no way of stopping it. Mega Minion and Snowball should be enough to take that Hunter off the board, I believe. And that Cannon Cart keeps shredding that left hand lane. 403, Steven calling GG here. He does have a healthy Mega Knight going deep into enemy territory. Archer's in the back working on the graveyard. Knight and Cannon Cart working on the Mega Knight. And yeah, there's the. I believe that's well played. Mini Minter should have the win here. Snowball does not get the Hunter, so Fireball comes in behind. Mini spending a lot here on this final moment. And he has to get back around to one more spell here. Well played from Steven. Or Buena Partita. Is that, that's, is that good game? Or is that well played? He's had good luck. I need to learn, I need to learn the, the, the Spanish translations here. Mini Minter wins game number two and sends us to our third and final. Oh, I got a little... Don't worry, guys. It's not the big one. I have a, little, I have a slight cold, so if you see me kind of sniffling here and there, uh, baby boy Slayton, he's two years old, which means he's a bucket of germs. And uh, got a little bit of cold here, so I might sneeze here and there, do my best not to do it into the microphone as we're going on. So let's go take a look at the chat here. Is Phone Cats in this tournament? Not that I'm aware of, Man's Raider. Good to see you. Welcome back. Canadian3000, love you, Rich. Thank you very much as well. Why change his name to King? Uh, a lot of players are playing on newer accounts. Getting ready for CRL 2021, if you get my drift. Speaking of CRL 2021, if you're looking to participate, guess what? You can. Make top 1,000 ladder. And hold on, let me just uh, reply here to something that uh, people need to know. People don't always know that I'm necessarily live with certain events. Um, let me go ahead and tell Mrs. Slayton something. There we go. David Noriega saying, I told you Minnie's coming back for the 2-1 win. Well, he might. Very well might. Thank you very much for the for the well wishes. Yeah, a little, little stuffy nose. Um, but, you know, got some... Got some... Uh, I don't remember which brand it is, but whatever cold medicine my wife gave me. Trying to help unstuff the... I'm all, it's, all right, it's all right up in here. It's brutal. But I'll be fine soon. Let's go ahead and jump into game number three here. All tied up one and one bans are Royal Recruits and Minor. Remember, this is a ban on first loss competition. So no bans game number one. And once you do take an L, then you are allowed to ban as time goes on. Speaking about CRL 2021, Mini Minter is certainly looking forward to this year because of the, the format. He was meant to be in CRL 2020, but was unable to participate last minute with uh, the fall split for Pain Gaming. Of course, they did pretty well, even though he wasn't able to be, to, to be on the team that time around. But no barriers looking for 2021. He says he feels very, very good about his chances in the 2021 CRL season. Saying he has not put in as much game time as he has in a long time as he is right now. Just yesterday, he put 10, 12 wins in the Grand Challenges and is trying to go for 70 Grand Challenges by the end of the week. So he's super confident and looking forward to kicking things off in CRL 2021. Yeah, Mucinex, I think, is what I got, uh, Mance Raider. Not entirely sure. Morton's number one in the Global Tournament and the Triple Elixir Tournament with minor wall breakers. Okay, that's crazy. Say six man, not Royal Recruits. I'll say both. Mega Knight to the left-hand side. Steven G going to get a King Tower activation here as... We're going to get King Tower activated here. Better way to put it. 
That Hunter, though, going to do a lot of damage, so that's one of those ones where you do, yes, Mini got the King Tower activation. But at what cost? And that U is going to do a lot of damage on Tower. Maybe a bit of a miscalculation here by Mini to go for the King Tower activation here. And that's going to be Tower down left-hand side, so Mini Minter now has to get real aggressive on the right, but he's down on Elixir. He's down on Elixir, up against Fisherman Ewiz Hunter. You see the attempted prediction on the Fisherman there with the skeletons in the middle. Thank you, Sandy, for the five-pound donation for burritos to help me heal. I really do appreciate that. Now, this is a GG, I think. I don't think there's any way for Mini Minter to come back here. That was a miscalculation on the left-hand lane. And now there's real no real way for him to break through here. He needed to get that tower down when he... He needed to make a decision, right? He needed to either sacrifice that left-hand tower and go all the way in or defend the left-hand tower. And he kind of did the halfway. He was going to sacrifice it and then went for the King Tower activation with the Mega Knight and gave up way too much damage. And Mini Minter takes the first loss. Opening match, Steven G takes a win here. So the hardest match in Steven's mind of this group, he takes the W. And that's a huge start here for probably the, the least known player, the least experienced player in Group A. Very, very well played for him. Uh, Raven Powers. I didn't actually watch the Max Holloway Calvin Cutter fight because I was casting the Bren Chonk up for the EU region, but... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be watching next weekend. I'm excited for that one. That'll be pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I've seen some highlights, though. Oof, did look good. Yeah, just a miscalculation there, in my opinion, by Mini Minter to uh, kind of go halfway. When you either need to commit to a tower trade or commit to the defense, and Mini did neither of those two things. Here we go. Game match number three of the day. The Canadian part of Pain Gaming's number four in the world squad sweep up against Borlax, who's been around for a very, very long time in Clash Royale. He's been to some of the biggest live events, some of the earliest live events. Has the 20-year-old. And the Californian here with maybe one of his, uh, his biggest moments in competition-wise. Of course, his favorite moment, as he said, is meeting all of his uh, the friends he already knew from Clash Royale at the CRL Combine for North America, where a lot of players got looked at by by teams to be picked up for CRL NA back in that year. Of course, if he is able to go on far in this competition, that might supplant that as a favorite memory for him. On the other side of it, Sweep's top memory, his favorite moment of his career, was sweeping Mexico in the first No-Tilt Worlds. That was a huge one for him, doing that for Canada. Sweep's had some big moments. It's fascinating, though, that that moment, taking out Mexico in No-Tilt Worlds, supplants his big CRL moments. But sometimes wearing your national colors can mean a lot to a player. So RGGSEQ, I believe, is going to be the spell here for Sweep. Although we have some people doing do some variants on the spell, on the big spell for this one. Borlax going with the graveyard deck. Giant Skeleton sets up to the left-hand lane. Mega Minion with the Hunter behind in response. Why am I still getting audio notifications from Slack when I turn those off? It says mute. I have mute all You know what? I'm going to close my Slack. There we go. Giant skeleton down for sweep. Jonathan Strongberg asking, Rich, what do you think of Fisherman in the back before you know the opponent's deck? I think it's pretty risky. And uh, I've never liked that choice.
Well defended so far against the graveyard. Sweep with the lead as we go into sudden death overtime. 1060 to 2099 or 1910. Royal Giant with support to the right-hand lane. Sweep deciding to switch things up a little bit here. I guess supporting the troops that were already going that way. Jorge Almeida. Mini Minter is of Peruvian descent, but lives in the U.S. So I guess they're putting him in N.A. for this, read, for, for this tournament. High Zappies. If I remember correctly, if memory serves me correctly, Borlax is first and foremost known as a Lava Hound player. I could be wrong on that one. Going Graveyard here. Obviously Graveyard very popular right now. And just no way through really so far for the American. RG gets on the left hand side, 602. That might put it out of reach here. There is a healthy Mega Knight on the right-hand side. Borlax has to get a Graveyard down and do a lot of damage right now. Poison should come out of the inside and does get a lot of value here, but a lot of value not really that valuable at this stage when what you need is tower damage. It's going to be Sweep taking game number one here. GG, well played. Sweep out to a good start. I know Modoz is known for Lava, but I, do, I thought Borlax was also known for Lava as well. I could be wrong. So GG, well played. I don't believe we have post-game stats set up for this event, unfortunately. Uh, B-Rad is not playing because they couldn't handle the memes. Yeah, no, B-Rad would be memeing all over the place, that's for sure. Who's favored to win North America? Well, let's take a look at the North American lineups, everybody. Of course, we already know the group for this one. Group B has some, some skill in it. Air Surfer, Allah, Bag, Brighton, Parker DeBoss, Kasim, Dread Unlock, and the return of C. McHugh in Group B, which I'm fascinated to see where C. McHugh's level is right now. I'm not competing for a long time. Group C is Boss, Razor, Magma, Star Wars, Daniel, Chris Hart, Lava, Eternity, and Greg. And then Group D is Ah Crap, CR Sucks, Hazard, Sondalia, So Rob, J. Skippy, the Juicy One, and Cheesecake. It's hard to say that Air Surfer isn't on paper favored in this group. Of, of course, Mini Minter, despite what we saw earlier, should certainly be someone everyone's looking out for. And here we go. Lava Hound for Borlax in game number two. So there you are. Problematic, yeah, no candy that already played once, but we will be seeing more no candy only Wi-Fi today. An Electro Giant for sweep, and it gets on tower with a lot of damage here. Lead for Borlak disappears. And we end the first minute and a half with a slight damage lead for sweep, but a significant elixir lead. Two up right now for the Canadian. who uh, a lot of people, we've even seen comments in the chat already about Sweep's patented look, the long hair and the mustache, the little chin goat as well. And I asked him of all the, the looks and comparisons that he's gotten for his, uh, for his look, what's the best one he's ever, hit that he, that he, in his opinion. And he says, and people say he looks like Dr. Disrespect is his favorite. Jonathan Stromberg, how do we do the Super Chat support? I don't actually know, Jonathan, how we do, how you do Super Chats. Um, it might be easily Googleable, not entirely sure. And that's going to be a balloon connection here, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble. I don't know about the Barb Hut in this deck. Barb Hut, to me, is a strange choice in this deck, which is already so slow. 
course, I might be about to get proved wrong right here. Electro Giant on the right hand side, the bigger concern, but even that low HP Electro Giant's gonna be a big problem for Borlax. You can see it's shredding the, the King Tower there. So hey, color me wrong. Barb Hut Electro Giant gets sweep the three crown win and the easy start here. For the former member of Pain Gaming. GG, well played. Matt Patterson saying, if you throw a log during play, oh, sneeze. There's going to be a few of those sneezes. I think I'm, I think I muted my mic in time for that one. Oh, now I'm in my eyes water, allergies, slash cold, all, all together. Uh, Matt Patterson with a fun idea. I think it'd be fun if you threw a log during play if they deflected each other. I wouldn't, I, I think that's fun. It'd be a huge change in mechanics. Hey, Jonathan Stromberg, thank you very much for the support. Um, really do appreciate that. That's really, really cool um, for the $5 Super Chat. Uh, thanks for thanks for being here a bunch as well. Um, this Westward, this Westward, I, uh, sorry for bungling the, the pronunciation. Prediction on better comeback, Colton or C. McHugh? Man, I don't know. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Um, I just, I know Colton has still been playing some CR. I have no idea what C. McHugh's been doing. So, um, that's going to be a hard one. I mean, C. McHugh... You feel like the ceiling is higher for C. McHugh, maybe, for Colton. Um, but just not sure where his, uh, where his like, what effort he's been putting in at all. I'm going to try to mute all my cold sounds, guys, best I can. Does Miniman live in the USA? Yes, um, he does. He he's lives in the U.S. He's of Peruvian descent. Here we go. Let's go on to the debut of Colton in this tournament up against Modaz Light. Who might be going lava to open up? We'll see. Modaz is from North Carolina, the east coast of the U.S. And before he plays in a match, Modaz likes to talk with his coach for a little bit and uh, find find some time just to, to prepare with his team. Just talking about game plan, things like that. Some people have almost no pre-match prep, but Modaz likes to keep it pretty professional. Royal Giant for Colton. RGGS, but with Fireball as opposed to EQ. Thoughts on Mirror? It, there was a time when Mirror was really good when you had a limited number of cards. Now that there's so many cards, Mirror is almost always a bad idea. Like 99.99999% of the time. I do play Mirror in Infinite Elixir tournaments, though. Because I play a minor Magic Archer NATO Mirror deck. Colton, of course, you can see rocking the complexity sweatshirt. Spent four, three seasons in CRL as a part of complexity. Came very close to winning North America in that first season, but after dominating the league for the first half of the 2018 season, complexity kind of fell apart on the back end, had to fight their way up through playoffs, and then could not get past the powerhouse that was Immortals. And Modaz Light punishes the opposite lane, gets a huge tower take, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty easy win here for Modaz in game number one. RG to the right-hand side. We'll see if there's any real opening here, the Zappies all go to that left-hand lane for the Giant Skeleton, but that Fireball to clean up the Royal Giant supports is going to be too brutal. Colton forced to really load up in one lane, and Modaz easiest, 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 easily takes care of it. GG well played to the North Carolina, and Modaz wins his first game here at the Brenchong Cup 2. 
So very, very nicely done for Modaz Light. Modaz personal best, 7.5K on ladder. And he does have some competitive experience, maybe some more competitive experience than a lot of the open qualifier players here. Um, and a lot of it in 2020 in particular. G, uh, a couple times through GZG, the Vertex Cup. A lot of work with AK Syndicate overall. When is Parker playing? Parker is in Group B. He's, in, he's tomorrow, I believe. So we'll see Parker then as part of Group B. Modaz Light's favorite moment of his career was a few days ago, actually, when his team won the Gem CE League. Does have a top 100 ladder fish and finish and number four in the global tournament. Who's my favorite NBA player of all time or right now? That's an important difference in question. Let's see. He just ignored the pigs on the right. Not a good move. Yeah, those pigs on the right might have a uh, might have some trouble. Calendar of the Cup. I believe all the information Rafael Varis is going to be here in that chat. When would Greg play? Um, Greg is in... Wait. Greg is in Group C. Greg, I was for a second I was nervous that there was no Greg. Greg is in Group C, and I'm really excited about it. So uh, we will see him in in that group. That's two days from now. It's going to be on Wednesday for our Group C action. Um, Borlax versus Steven G and Modaz versus Steven G will both take will both be off stream according to production. We'll see if that stays the plan. Yeah, Modaz was in Sandstorm. That's true, as Gino's pointing out there in chat. Let's go ahead and jump into our second game. Modaz up one on Colton. Colton banning the Royal Recruit. Six man, not allowed. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Is that controversial? Ronaldo's about the same age as me. Messi, I think, is like 76 from the way his, from what he looks like. Mateo, hi, Rich. There are no stats today. There haven't really been post-game stats much during this event. CMC does not play today. He plays tomorrow. So Modaz Light going to Lava Loon. And RG for Colton here. And uh, when I asked him the question of what's your deck pick for the best of one for $1 million, Lava Loon was the pick for Modaz Light. No big surprises there. RG going to get eaten up pretty nicely here. No, actually. Royal Giant gets a lot of damage. Colton going to defend the supporting troops here. It's a good giant skeleton. And it might. He actually wants it to go down faster. Because it might go down fast enough. No, it won't. Balloon's going to go right on by. Oh, unfortunate turn of events for Colton. That's going to be a tower down. And uh, Andy Jimenez, you mentioned you like or play soccer. What's your favorite team? Uh, I'm planning to support Austin FC when they do finally launch the next season of the MLS. I like Man City in the Premier League. So again, Colton goes down early and finds himself in a tough situation. He ha he has to spend on that right hand on that left hand lane. Has to defend this right hand lane. Will probably end up losing this right hand tower in the effort to get that left hand tower. Does the zappy turn to the balloon quickly enough? And that balloon's gonna connect on the right hand side as well. Easy zap there. Modaz light, completely dominant in this one. Colton never really seen in either one of these games. GG, well played. Modaz Light comes out with a big opening 
Uh, Manchester United, Rich says Eric Val. You're on the you are okay. To the, you're on the dark side. Come to the light four side. Uh, one of my best friends is a big man U supporter. I don't have a real big dog in the fight in the EPL, but one of my best friends is a huge man U supporter. Um, so partially I picked Man City because uh, they're my team in FIFA. Partially because I like their kits, like the, the the powder blue. I think it looks really good. Looks good on me in particular. And partially to um, stick it to my buddy Rafi, who's a big Man U supporter. So. Why are the words in Spanish? Because it's a Spanish production, guys. That's why. That's why. Since you're a Cali living in Texas now, Lakers or Spurs? Um, Sacramento Kings. There you go. That that basketball affiliation will never change. Um, to answer favorite NBA player probably of all time would be... Um, that's a tough... Uh, man. Man. Um, Jason Williams is probably is pretty is pretty far up there, right? A lot of fun to watch in the in the in the early transition of the Kings from being complete trash to being pretty good during my high school days. So there you go, Luis Partida. Thank you very much. Um, a favorite NBA player of all time is Bugsy Bogues. Not a bad call there, Mance Raider. Uh, I don't know what Bunny's saying. Oh, get out for, but oh, you get out. Here we go. We've now finished round one of match play. Into our second round, it's going to be no candy, only Wi-Fi against Mini Minter. And like a lot of players in this tournament, no candy picked Mini Minter as his most difficult matchup of the day. Of course, both these guys 0-1 so far, so this is a kind of important match for both of them. Winner will be 1-1, one one, loser will be 0-2. And, and that's going to be a tower down on the right-hand side, but the question is, can Mini Minter defend against the stinky cheese push on the left-hand lane. Fireball cleans up some of that, but that should be towered out on the left-hand side. As I've said many times on this broadcast, if there is any deck amongst graveyard decks that is still pretty good in a crosswise game, it is the one that Mini Minter is running. Does not mean that it's easy, though. And there you go. Mini Minter going for King Tower with the aggressive play here. You understand why he had all the elixir from the elixir golem, but now a healthy electro giant. Probably we'll see an eagle come in front of it, maybe in the pocket here. And there you go. Pocket eagle, baby dragon behind. Hunter takes care of the electro dragon. That's really good here for Mini. And Mini Minter comes out really nicely from that exchange, in fact. Again, Knight Graveyard, Bar Barrel to support as well. And this might be a three crown here for Mini Minter. Needs a couple more skeleton shots here. Fireball to finish things off. Goes with the Mortar Aggressive and Mini Minter. Wins against the Stinky Cheese deck here in game number one. Man, Mini Minter with the uh, the comeback there. or I guess he was ahead at first, so not quite a comeback, but the tower trade feels dangerous. Uh, what does the Stinky Cheese deck mean? Zigzag Nemesis, Eagle and Battle Healer. That's a, Stinky Cheese is the nickname for the Eagle and Battle Healer deck. Stinky Cheese is just, it's, the, it's actually an old baseball term, the high Stinky Cheese. It's when you throw a fastball, like a really fast, if you don't know baseball, a fastball is a very fast pitch. I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. So when you throw a fastball um, up in the zone, like high, uh, like right above chest height, the strike zone, if you don't know, I don't know who knows baseball, who doesn't, but from your knees to about your chest is your strike zone. The high stinky cheese is when you throw a fastball, like just above chest height, like between chest and neck sort of. It's an area that some players will get tricked into swinging at. And that's the high stinky cheese. It's like, it's just kind of a cheesy, it's a cheesy pitch to throw that will get you some strikeouts, will get you some wins. And that's kind of how we view the uh, the Eagle and Battle Healer. The stinky cheese. It's cheesy thing to do, and it stinks. You don't, it, ugh, you don't like it, but people do it. So there you go. Baseball is your favorite sport. Well done. So uh, let's take a look at some of the chat here for a moment. Oh, let's go ahead and actually jump into game number two. Mini Minter with the lead. Yeah. 
No candy, only Wi-Fi has been grinding outside of the major tournaments for... Ooh, here we go, the no candy deck. So game number two, down one, no candy finally goes to his comfort deck. Let's see how he plays this one up against this cannon cart graveyard. I, I, I assure you that no candy has played this matchup many times. What I, what I don't know is how he feels about this matchup. Lord to the right will take care of those spears really easily. And yeah, Mini Mentor can't be happy about that. And with that bowler all over tower, Graveyard comes in from No Candy. Bar Barrel doesn't do a lot against the Graveyard. And that takes the lead right back. And takes it back by a lot. 477 to 1127. No Candy only Wi-Fi and a significant lead here in game number two after losing game number one. And I've seen this deck a ton, both in my own tournaments and also uh, as a caster for Super League Gaming for a lot of their events. If you never went to one of the U.S., Super League Gaming had these nationwide events where people would go to live venues like movie theaters or uh, restaurants or things like that, or like Dave and Buster's, that sort of place, and would host some live stuff there, and they would play against the, the people who were in their same city, in Phoenix, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, and then the winners from each city would then go represent their city against a national pool of competitors and no candy only Wi-Fi. Played many of those live events out of Phoenix. Lots of success there. And that's a highlight of his career was getting to play live with other people, get to meet people in the community and of course test himself against some very stiff competition. Five ninety one to three eighty six. No candy does have dual lane pressure, whereas Mini Mentor is kind of committed to just the one lane, especially at this stage. Of course, Graveyard can always switch, but I don't see a big switch coming in. There you go, Graveyard left hand side, and the mortar connection is absolutely huge for Mini Mentor. That is absolutely massive. That's gonna be tower down for both. There's a semi healthy giant though coming in for No Candy. So now we're in a crosswise game. No Candy's deck also does work in uh, in a crosswise game. So. I don't really know if I give anyone the advantage here. I guess No Candy does have the damage lead at the moment, so that's pretty huge. Graveyard in, the bowler will go in the pocket, and there you see it. And yes, I did predict the bowler in the pocket because that's the move. I've seen No Candy pull it off many, many times before. Mortar connects, Cannon Cart in the pocket, and the Giant does not pick up the Cannon Cart. That's going to be a lot of damage right now for Mini Minter. And no candy, it's arrow zap, so he really can't spell cycle here on that king tower. Has to be careful, he could lose this right now. Has to play bowler on defense, spear goblins pull out the zap, and now it's 8-10 to 2-30. And the pressure continues, and unlucky there for King Mini Minter. I threw the king on there this time around. Unlucky for Mini. They are both now trying to pull off this graveyard push, and it's Mini Minter who gets their second. No candy, only Wi-Fi. Ties things up, we're going to game number three. GG, well played. Taking a look at the chat here. $100 open returning, not anytime soon, guys. Let's see, anything else? The world's, um, the world's coming to an end because Steven G clapped Mini Mentor. Yeah, well, who knows? Right now, Mini Mentor or one of these two, Mini Mentor or No Candy, is going to start their tournament off 0 2. Not out by any means, but does not give them much wiggle room. 4 and 3 has mostly been the mark you have to hit to make it into the next stage. We have had some 3 and 4s sneak on through, but not a ton of them. And for some reason, we're watching a replay of Steven G and Borlax. So uh, let me tell production. I don't know why we have a replay of Steven Borlax up. What is happening here? Hello? Well, um, I'll I'm telling production. Do 
to change this. We're all telling production wrong game. There we go. And now they're going to pull out of that game. Not sure why that was the case. We should get the correct game up here in just a moment. Production challenges. No tea today. I'll get some tea in here. I'll get some tea in here fairly soon. Um, let's see. Are you on Twitch? Or why are you not always on Twitch as well? Um, because in order to go to Twitch, I have to use a, re a, a bouncing service to send it to both Twitch and YouTube. And that service crapped out the other day, and I don't really feel like risking it. So it looks like No Candy is going No Candy one more time. We'll see if that is actually the case. And Mini Mints are getting really deep into No Candy's territory here. It's a, that's a four elixir advantage given away by No Candy in that moment. I don't really love that choice out of No Candy only Wi-Fi. Gives the Candy Cart connection as well. Very weird choices by No Candy Only Wi-Fi in this one to wait that long. Oh, Bowler is banned, so obviously not the No Candy deck. Switch in Dark Prince instead and tower down. Really not sure what's happening with No Candy Only Wi-Fi. I guess it was lag, maybe. And now Giant with the Dark Prince behind. And going to be a very difficult comeback here for Mini Minter. Did he lag or something? That's my only my only explanation would be that he lagged that that he lagged out. No Wi-Fi only candy says Mohammed Ham. Yep, might be the might be the case. It was either a lag or a poor decision. One of those two. We'll, I'm sure that we'll find out. He might stop in the chat and tell us. That graveyard doing some good damage on the left-hand side, though. Not out of it yet. <laughs> Certainly behind, though. And that cannon cart in the pocket should be the killing blow here. I'm not going to get the tower down, but even if you do get this tower back... going to be very difficult. Please translate their BMs. Um, you translate their BMs. No, Kenny's going to get tower here. He's going to get tower. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, no, he's not. Wow, I thought he was going to get it. Doesn't get it. GG, well played. And Mini Minter survives a scare here against No Candy and gets back on track. Mini Minter Goes to 1-1, one one, no candy, only Wi-Fi falls to 0-2 oh to start things off. So a little, uh, a little bit of um, sarcasm there in the chat, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our next match is going to be coming up here in just a moment. We just finished... Mini Minter versus No Candy, Borlax and Steven G taking place off stream. Latak and Colton, I believe, is our next one on stream. We'll see that in just a couple of moments. As we get over there, guys, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. Already 244 likes, guys. Thank you very much. Um, let's try to hit, I want to, let's see if we hit 1,000 today. We hit 1,000 for the first day of EU. It'd be super cool to get there again today for the first day of NA. Uh, let's show how much our people are excited about the North American region, about the NA region for this event. Uh, which group is uh, Arce 360 playing in? Is he playing in a group? Is he in a group? Um, I don't see him. So there you go. What language do they speak in BM? That's Spanish, the um, the, the emotes. Do I remember when Colton won King's Cup? That's That, that was a the thing. There you go. Um, what was that lost picture? He's having fun. Having a good time with it. Hopefully we're all having a pretty good time with it. And we'll be with our next one in just a moment here. Oh, no candy. Literally won that if I didn't DC. So it was a DC. That's what we, expect. That's what we expected. 
Weird DC early on. The, uh, all the, the all the in-game language in Spanish, this is a Spanish language production coming from the Team Queso house in in Spain. Um, is Colton back in competitive play or just for this event? I think just for this event, but we'll see. We'll see what he's doing. Not entirely sure. I know that Colton's also in school. Um, Varen the Veteran asking, who's a better player, me or Andrew? Andrew is the better player than I am. Um, so there we go. Conquer Gaming, how late are you? We are into our sixth match of the day. And that's going to be Latak and Colton. Here we go. Any reason I decided for YouTube today, says Ben. Um, I'm, if I'm between YouTube and Twitch, I'll always pick YouTube because I'm not a streamer. I stream these tournaments, but I don't want to be streaming full-time. I only want to stream these tournaments, and the rest of it, I want to make YouTube videos. So I'd rather have everyone come to YouTube than go to Twitch. I'll do Twitch when I am co-streaming, but I haven't been co-streaming because last week the service I used to co-stream failed, and it led for led to an outage for a while so um there you go but yeah i don't want to be a full-time streamer i i like streaming these events and then when i'm not doing these events i make youtube videos but not really a lot of point for me to drive all that traffic to twitch when i'm only gonna be on twitch when these tournaments come up so there you go and i also prefer youtube because youtube as much supports mobile gaming much better than twitch does Speaking of which, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, guys. There's the link in the chat. Colton looking like it's going to be Electro Giant, and Latak looking like it's going to be Electro Giant. Although the Fireball, maybe not. Um, Amjid, Rich, I can't see the comments you're saying on live. I'm not sure what you mean. You can't see the comments? Well, then put the chat on. Electro Giant to the left-hand lane. Ice Wiz in response. As you can see, standings on the right-hand side. Latak currently 1-0 after his win over No Candy. Now attack sets up his Electro Giant. I gotta think that Lightning has the advantage here, except for the Dark Prince Shield. So you go ahead and Lightning behind here, but that Dark Prince Shield is what makes things really, really challenging here for the Lightning. Once you take it off, and only got two hits though, did Colt. This tower going to be in a little bit of trouble here as the Dark Prince does connect, and that's the first big connection of the game. Baby Dragon does get pulled off. Good NATO there from Colton, but he is way behind on Elixir. Latak sets up with his Goblin Cage. Guys, the, the Sunnies will come out later. Electro Giant to the right-hand lane. Baby Dragon picks up Baby Dragon on the left-hand side for Colton. Final 90 seconds approaching in sudden death, and Latak is in the lead. He does cycle faster. We'll see if Colton starts trying to get some value of lightning on tower, and he does. He does get that value on tower. So that's what Colton might, might start trying to do a lot of here. He is behind on Elixir again, though. Latak off to a good start so far in this tournament. If he can get the win here, as we go into Triple Elixir, that would be huge. Oh yeah, guys, if you are trashing players for their pictures in here, uh, you will get timed out and eventually get, uh, get banned, so behave yourselves. Lightning trying to win this bridge fight. That's a lot of damage to give up here in the final 40. That NATO from Colton, very good though. He goes opposite lane. I don't know how I feel about the opposite lane play here. 
I understand why, though. Does force a little bit of expenditure, but not much. Electro Giant to the right-hand side, so now just trying to see... Look, both those towers pretty even. So Colton going for what he can, the, the best he can do, I guess. Lightning does take out some of that, but there's way too much DPS on the board here. Electro Giant not going to do enough. Fireball comes in. And it looks like Latak has got this one. Game number one. Going to Latak. GG, well played. Now one win away from starting out his match play 2-0. For the NA, for NA, I'm gonna wear different hats. That would be fun if I had that many different hats. Yeah, guys, uh, people being toxic in the chat in general will get warned, will get timed out, and then eventually will be banned. So uh, behave yourselves in the in the chat all the way around. And um, if you don't, like you, timing out one. Oh, this is fun. I actually, I, I, I mods, feel free to swing those hammers. Um, but I'm happy to do them myself as well. Um, let's see. Attack playing well so far. What balance changes did you make to the meta? As uh, XXX. Uh, I would remove Barbutt from the game. Although they already nerfed it into the into Oblivion, so there you go. Pretty much got me done. Um, let's see. Is Kasim tomorrow? Kasim does play tomorrow. Yes. Part of Group B alongside Air Surfer, Allah, Bag, CBQ, Brighton, Parker the Boss, and Dread Unlock. Um, oh, DC the Boss. Yeah, I know I know you, DC. Very well. Yes, thank you. I would appreciate the mod help. Um, let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Attack up one. Like I said, good start for Latak overall in this event. And answering the the one mil the one million dollar best of one question, what deck would you go with? Latak used to be a three musketeers one trick. And he would have done three musketeers before they got, you know, murdered. But now he'd probably go giant skelly loon. The bomb tower ice whiz NATO version. My favorite ladder deck right now, Adam Doctor. I'm playing a lot of minor wall breakers. I think I hit 5.4 yesterday. Working on that push to 6k for this season. And King Tower activation there for Latak. And the counterplay gets a lot of damage. Joy Archie, no Indian players, professional CR, so sad left from India. Um, not in this region, this is the North American region. Uh, Burton, yes, I, did, I knew Jeff Scott very well. Very sad to, to hear of his passing, I mentioned it um, on some of my non-Twitter social medias. But uh, yeah, as, as a long time part of the comedy store, Jeff Scott was an absolute gem and he will be missed, that's for sure. A lot of people are kind of. I see people talking about balloon nerfs. I think I think balloon is perfectly balanced, guys. I don't think there's. I don't think balloon. Maybe, maybe there's something that should be done, but I think that I think that it'd be hard to nerf balloon without killing it at this point. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I don't think balloon is. I don't think balloon is significantly OP. So Latak, looking like he's in a 2-0 Colton here. Has to defend against one more push on the right-hand side. Graveyard comes out defensively. And the Freeze. The Freeze and the NATO. How long does the Inferno Dragon stay on the board? Can it do enough? Oh, 135! Oh, my word. Colton nearly got that tower down. What a crazy end. What a crazy end. That's so nutty. 
That is so absolutely nutty. Man, that really almost kept the game going, and Colton might have won if he gotten that tower down. That would have been insane. Instead, Latak takes his second win, second match victory. So 2-0 currently, Latak the leader here in Group A. Um, Jeffrey Chan asking, when is Wallace playing? Wallace is in the LATAM group, which plays later today. I don't know if he's in Group A, though. Let's take a look at the LATAM groups. Um, Wallace is in Group C. So Wallace will be playing Wednesday. Wednesday on uh, Cashman's stream. There's the link for you in the chat. Replays will be available eventually here on this channel. And guys, we're at just about 300 likes. Let's go ahead and pump that up. I really want to show... I really want to show everybody how much support there is for NA specifically in this tournament. Look, the reality is that, um, the, you know, you look at these regions, there's a ton of support for LATAM, EU, and Asia. NA doesn't get a lot of attention. Doesn't get a lot of, uh, a lot, there's been a lot of the big name players have, have retired in this last year. You know, no Wings, no RF. Um, you know, B-Rad, one of the more popular NA creators, moved on to, to all content creation. Um, a lot of the major NA players aren't really around anymore. Although this return of C. McHugh tomorrow will be interesting, but I really want to show how much support there is for NA overall. So if you're excited for NA, go ahead and throw a like, and the, like on this video so we can uh, show the organizers, a little, let's get a little more love for North America overall when it comes to these tournaments. Latak saying, Rich, I'm officially the luckiest person in the tournament. GG's Latak. I cannot believe that that didn't take your tower on the right-hand side. So here we go. Modaz Light up against Sweep. As you can see, up next will be Borlax versus Mini Minter. I asked Sweep how he feels about his native country going into 2021. If there's any people he thinks will make a big impact in CRL 2021, besides himself, of course. Um, and he said he wanted to say Rubik's. And. Rubik's a very talented Canadian who was meant to be in the No Tilt World Championship, had some issues, couldn't participate. Um, but it looks like Rubik's has to uh, has to step back from competitive play because of school and family stuff. So not really sure where, uh, who's going to carry the torch for Canada in 2021. It might end up continuing being sweep. Is B Rad to return to competitive competition to competitive play? I have no idea if B Rad's planning on pushing ladder or playing in this new version of CRL that is is less demanding in some ways. You know, if you push top thousand ladder, you're in CRL. I don't know how much B Rad's been pushing ladder in these last few seasons. I haven't checked his last few. Let's go ahead and actually check. I'm sure someone in the chat actually knows B-Rad's most recent finish, but I'll go ahead and check it myself right now. What did B-Rad finish on ladder last season? Let's go check out the Maple Myers. B-Rad, last season. Oh, it looks like we might have a freeze here on the feed. Let me double check. Oh, the little, little delay there for a moment. Um, previous season, he finished... 1,286th at 6.7k. So my guess is B-Rad didn't go for a really serious push. Um, this season, he's currently 388th at 6.5k. So my guess is that B-Rad's going to go ahead and, you know, get those points from ladder play and participate. You know, might as well for the, for the content. Obviously, this version of CRL is much, much less than much less commitment than CRL was in the past. B-Rad saying he's not participating, he doesn't care for CRL, does not never play competitive again. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens when he, you know, starts qualifying, starts getting top thousand ladder finishes. No towers down yet. Modaz light with the lead at the moment. He did think that this would be his hardest matchup of the day against Sweep. You understand why. Sweep's a very dynamic player, kind of unpredictable. Known for playing both meta decks and 
weird out there stuff. And of course, this version of Lumberloon, certainly not central meta, the one that we see Sweep rocking right now. And let me just check with production on that one. I believe that my connection is fine because I'm on fiber optics. But that's the second little hiccup we've had. Yeah, I'm getting... My connection is totally great. So that must be coming. That must be an issue. Remember, keep in mind, guys, that this is coming from Spain where they've had a bunch of technical issues because of um, a recent blizzard. Uh, just to let you guys know how my internet connection is doing, I'm hardwired into fiber optics. So at this exact moment... I am getting 630 megabytes down, 654 megabytes per second up, and 6 millisecond ping. So, just confirming that my internet is working great. Graveyard in on the right-hand side, gonna get that tower down to under 1,000 HP. Balloon easily pulled here by the bomb tower. Snowball, fireball, bomb tower, and archers, making it, of course, very difficult for these balloons to get any real connections. That's a good fireball there. Great fireball and night out of Modaz light, but now more pressure from Sweep. Snowball comes in, not gonna do enough. That's gonna be tower down. Sweep takes the victory here. Oh my word. Sweep takes the victory in that one. Did not see that one coming. Did not see that one coming. Wow. Absolute wow in that one. The fiber flex, yeah. Gotta show, gotta show off how dope the Wi-Fi is here. Too much information? What, too much information about how good my internet is? My internet is excellent. I might have the best internet of anybody you've ever seen stream Clash Royale. Um, with the new format of CRL, says uh, Rich Vic. With the new format of CRL, I feel the last three or four days of season are going to be chaotic with people, with, with people within uh, the top you know, 1,500 of the leaderboard all having a chance to qualify. What do you feel? Um, well, I don't believe they're going to go past the top 1,000. I believe that if people from the top 1,000 are not are, are disqualified, that they're not going to go and pull people up into the top 1,000. So, um, but I I do think the last few days are going to be crazy. The it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's put it that way. Got to be a whole lot of fun. Um, we'll see our next game here in just a moment. Fabiano saying Payne's Wallace is the best player in all formats. Wallace is pretty darn good. Excited to see him throughout this season. He's another guy I expect to have to continue his success as we go into 2021. Nolan, I'm jealous of your internet. Yeah, I know. Hey, I had I had Spectrum for a long time. It's not good. I'm going to have bad internet this summer. I'm going to have bad internet this summer, and then once the summer is over, I'll be back to, good, back to the good stuff again. But there'll be like two months this summer while I have really bad internet. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Sweep, currently with the advantage. Mentioning how Sweep does play a lot of out there decks, and I asked him if he has a favorite of the latter one trick decks. Of course, he quite famously played, I believe, the Denisito Pro deck. It was either that or the Mohamed Parsa deck in CRL, which was nutty, during playoffs. Uh, he just prefers to play, to, to mix in decks that aren't super meta, so people aren't as used to playing those matchups. You gotta pay the cost for your internet. Nope, I pay 70 bucks a month for my great internet. Shout out, Austin. Rich, did I ever finish in the top 1,000 on ladder? Not even close. My personal best is 63-23. Balloon to the left-hand side. That one should get a connection here, and it does. Ice Wiz working against the Hunter. And Piggy's to the right-hand side. And Bomb Tower gets in late for Modaz Light. It felt like that NATO was a big overcommitment on the left-hand side, the one that he used at the end of the Balloon connection. I don't know if it were, was necessary for the connection, but it took him down to almost to about zero HP and didn't get him much. I'm... Jime Jar saying, Rich, how would you feel if you were the guy who got a 1,001 finish for CRL 2021? I'd feel great because that meant I got a 1,001 finish, which, uh, which is something I would never feel, never feel capable of doing. What is Andrew's best? Um, 
high 6Ks. I don't remember what it is exactly. I'm pretty sure he broke 6.6, .6, though. I don't actually know his exact personal best, though. Balloon does not connect. Modaz like going for some fancy plays here. And they are not precisely paying off. And Fisherman goes to the middle quite like you'd expect. This balloon has a chance. And not anymore. Death damage not gonna get in. Guys, I think we're I'm working on some plans for the end of this season. But hopefully we'll come up with some cool ways for you to engage more with the end of season ladder play. To give people certain since it is part of CRL. Hey, Hawaiian Bound just bought your first two pairs of Gooder Shades because of you. Hawaiian Bound, what did you get? Which pairs did you buy? Did you go with the, uh, did you go with the White Fire? Is that what you got? I need to get a hair, I need a haircut desperately. My hair is so shaggy right now. Did you go with, did you go with the Whites? Right, which are called, what, the side, the side scroll eye roll? Is that what you got when you bought your first two pairs? Tell me what you got, dude. I'm 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 a collector, as people know. I like I'm I actually have like four more pairs on their way right now. So, um, Rich Slate, what allows me to have great internet? I live in a place where Google Fiber is. That's what allows me to have great internet. There's Google Fiber optic connections in uh, in Austin, and it's not expensive. It didn't cost anything to install. It cost me seventy bucks a month. So there you go. Rich, do you think Major Ebob Ebarb God is the best player in North America? I have no idea who Major Ebarb God is. So there you go. I've seen you ask that question multiple times, so I'll just say, I don't know who Major Ebarb God is. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Um, is there any disqualification letting someone win without trying? If two teammates are playing against each other, and maybe one is already on the lower end and no way to get four wins? Um, I don't know exactly how they make it all work. Um, do you know the name of Andrew's stream, Nolan Powell? Um, just search Andrew Guy. You can also go to his Twitter and find his stuff there. Man, you talk so fast. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get a lot of information out very quickly. Hey, do I have some Ray-Ban aviators? No, I do not. I would not pay that much for sunglasses. If I get a gift, great. Otherwise, these are the bad boys I rock. And they fit my face nicely. So here we go. Borlax against Mini Minter. And like pretty much everybody in this tournament, Borlax said that Mini Minter would be his toughest piece of competition. He went on to say that it's because Mini Minter's been top tier for a very long time and his, his, his performance is consistent. That's one of the things about Mini Minter. He's consistently good. You got Iced Yeti and the Professional Respawners. Nice, dude. The Iced Yetis are fire. I might get those. And I do have the Professional Respawners. Strong move, dude. Tweet me pictures, at Rich Slayton. Is my Twitter even, do I have my Twitter programmed in here? I thought I did. I thought I had a button for my Twitter. That might be it right there, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Tweet me, at Rich Slayton, with a picture of your, of your sunglasses. Graveyard into the right-hand side, Mega Knight tanking, but Zappy's more than up to the task. I don't put much stock in, um, in designer brands, guys. Have I purchased expensive items before? Sure. Were they sometimes great? Yeah, like, if you're buying a suit, I'm a big fan of buying a nice suit. You know, there's some differences between a cheap suit and a nice suit. That's no question. A good jacket? Yeah, go ahead and spend some money on a solid jacket. But if you're paying 100 bucks for a t-shirt, you got robbed, dude. Royal Giant down behind the Giant Skeleton on the right-hand side. GS goes back behind the Royal Giant because of the bar barrel. And then does not tank for the, uh, for the Royal Giant here. RG should get two shots on the right-hand side, though. And it does. 
10.96 remaining. Mini Minter in the lead here. Mini Minter is of Peruvian descent, guys, to clarify one more time, but does live in the U.S. Final 90 seconds remaining. And Mini Minter splits the Roombas, two to the right, one to the left. It's been very difficult for Borlax to get a tank into the second level for this graveyard, but that Fisherman... No, but the Giant Skeleton Bomb cleans up the support, so no good option there. Poison value starting to come in, though, for Borlax on the right, and he's going to go ahead and graveyard here, I think. Just fakes it in fa instead. Interesting choice. And Fisherman versus Fisherman in the middle. This fight is taking place. The one thing that's really cool about the Fisherman, in my opinion, is it it's spread out the way that these bridge battles take place. And you could you can argue that the Fisherman's too strong. You can argue a bunch of different things about the Fisherman. I think it's not too strong right now. It's just too technically valuable. But the Fisherman made a, moved a lot of the the fight into the middle of the board at the bridge rather than purely being at the bridge and it, it, it added essentially excuse me added essentially a third lane into these fights here we go final 15 seconds 688 on the right hand side Borlax has to cycle like a madman here if he has any shot I don't believe he has that shot poison down on the Roombas trying to get some more damage on tower EQ gonna go the opposite direction not gonna have a mini minter gonna take game number one here off of the, the California. GG, well played. Oh yeah, use creator code rich, guys, right down there in the corner. Help me help me get more sunglasses. And by the way, you can see that the sunglasses with the, you know, the logo, there you go. GG, well played here. Hey, thank you, Hawaiian Bound, I do appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all you guys who are super positive in the, in the, in the chat. There have been, there's been a couple of I have to admit, there have been a couple of uh, YouTube comments after the live streams that have uh, that have gotten to me a little bit, and it's uh, it's it's nice to come out here with the the live audience and those of you who were really positive and exciting to, to who are and so supportive. So definitely do appreciate that. But there was yeah there was like there was one yesterday that, that got to me a little bit. I deleted it. Um, Dominic, rich so cringe. Omg, what do you mean? I'm pro cringe, guys. By the way. Um, code Andrew Guy in the Valorant shop. Strong move there, Sam. Andrew Guy is certainly good at Valorant. No sure, no questions there. I think he's like diamond something. He kind of crushes it in that area. Send Link of Glasses. I want to check him out. Um, sure. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, you know, I'll send you, the, I'll send you the link to the limited collections page, which is pretty cool. That's the limited collection. I'm actually going to be getting some of those sent to me very soon. I'm really excited about that. Uh, watching from Iraq. Worst internet on the whole planet. Oh, man. Um, good luck. Yeah, salty YouTube comments. Nolan, yeah, there were a couple... There have been a couple salty YouTube comments. Um, and, uh, you know, is what it is. But every once in a while, one of those get to you. But, but I, then I come here, hang out with you guys, and it makes me... It's, it's a whole lot better. Um, Rich, is this your full-time job? Asked Jonah. Um, my overall full-time job uh, is a combination of this, of casting. So I guess you could describe between the three things. Right, CRL slash Clash Royale stuff overall, um, and casting in general. I cast for other things, but mostly Clash Royale. Um, I'm a producer as well. I produce uh, produce things for AMG, Aftershock Media Group, the company founded by CWA and Powerbang. And then I'm also a producer for Super League Gaming. And then, uh, yeah, some of this stuff as well. Hey, the Treeline09 with a $20 super chat. You and all the mods deserve edible gold leaf for all this great coverage. Been a very entertaining gut couple of days. Guys, you know what? I, re keep reminding me. I'm gonna order the edible gold leaf, and we'll do like, and, and I'll do, a, I'll do an eating a golden burrito um, video at some point. I'm gonna eat a bunch of golden stuff. My Mrs. Slayton actually is asking me if it's safe to be eating the edible gold leaf, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm doing it. And then, yeah, I see a lot of support coming in for the chat. Thank you very much, guys. I do appreciate it. I wasn't trying to fish for compliments. But uh, it did, that. yeah, there was just one, there was one yesterday that was super salty, and I was like, aw. 
Here we go. Game number two. Ban is Hunter by Borlax. King Mini Minter up one at the moment. And I've joked, Mini Minter, uh, I used to host a weekly $100 open tournament. Not sure if they'll ever come back. I might be a bit too busy for those now. Uh, but they were fun for a while. And we ended up having to nickname them the Mini Minter Tournament because there was one point where he won it three, three weeks in a row. I mean, basically, it was just sending Mini Minter a, a hundred bucks every week. It was kind of crazy. Hey, Stuart Brown. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I hope, hope good luck with your studies. I hope you're doing well in university right now. Solid lightning out of Mini Minter there, just to stick that cannon cart deep in enemy enemy territory. Um, Rich, do you think that TV Royale should only show top 200 replays or include 4K ladder players? I don't know. Is what it is. Oh, you want the one called Sunny's on the Chance of Sprinkles? Yeah, those are fire. Those are fire, buddy, for sure. Graveyard into the right-hand side for Borlax. Trying to punish... That's a th one of the interesting things about... Oh, that's a lightning to just a bomb tower. Does that turn out well for Mini Minter? I mean, he gets a ton of damage, so yeah. So yes, it does. Man, is Electro Giant, is this a deck just, especially matchups in particular, is this deck just a little bit too strong? It feels like it's harder to punish op uh, opposite lane against Electro Giant than it is against Golem. That's tower down, Mini Minter with an easy 2-0. So after a, a rough start in this event, Mini Minter totally back on track in his last two matches. GG, well played for Mini. Andrew is playing WoW now, says Zach. Oh, he got, he, he, oh, is he playing the, like the, the re-release of WoW Classic? Oh boy, yeah, I can't touch that. I, uh, I've been clean from World of Warcraft since 2007. Uh, I played 110 days of game time. That's right, 110 days of game time on my Resto Shaman. Back in the 40-man 40, 40 ra 40 raid days, I played through Burning Crusade. I will not touch the stuff again. Like I said, I've been clean from World of Warcraft for about 13, 14 years now. Um, let's see. Is this duel? Nope, this is ban on first loss. Um, Kevin O, these streams taking you from a legit temp, from a legit noob to soon being able to crack the top 10k. Dude, very very cool, man. Very cool. Happy to see that you're uh, you're taking some. I wish I learned from watching as well as that. Um, I feel like I've definitely not absorbed as much skill as I uh, in terms of gameplay as I would have liked. That's for sure. How high are you on ladder? Right now, I'm like 5.4. About. Um, I'm looking to end end the season at 6k. We'll see. Um, well, that's Mini Minter. The first need to kill the archers. That lightning in the cannon cart next to the tower. Ice Witch Splash. Great time is over. Yeah, no, Mini Minter played great. Played really good. We don't get to see Borlax's winning picture. Maybe at some point. He, he's got a win, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, Rich. Uh, guys, so here's a little... Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm not trying to be mean about this comment. Um, but uh, Flores commented, Rich, why are the Brazilian Castle not as charismatic as you? Um... One thing about compliments, guys, and this is just a, a general thing. You can say, hey, Rich, I love how charismatic you are. Compliments don't have to be comparative, right? You don't need to tell me, hey, Rich, I like you so much more than this person. Or tell someone else, hey, I like you so much more than Rich, right? Just say, hey, I love how charismatic you are. Um, but one one thing that you do see is, a, and I hate, to, I hate to use the term public figure, but I've been like comedian for a long time, commentator for a long time, et cetera, et cetera. And I have both, I've been the receiver, the recipient, and also the um, the victim of the comparative compliment so much. So, you know, just say, hey, I love how charismatic you are, or I love your casting. You don't need to compare me to someone else or compare someone else to me if you like their work. And not to call you out there, Flores, just, you know, it's a, just this is kind of a moment for everybody. Thank you, Wildlife Lou. We do appreciate that you love it. 
how do you enter these tournaments? The, the Pro Clasher, good question. You can follow me on Twitter. I'll retweet when there's open qualifiers for them. And from my Twitter, you can also find Rebel Amar, who runs a lot of these ones, but they are often open qualifiers. Mini Minter going um, Cannon Cart Graveyard, so Mini Minter with a lot more GUI. And of course, someone saying Mini One Tricks GUI. Yeah, well, Mini Minter plays a ton of GUI. Minor Wall Breakers for Colton. This is the very people who asked what I'm playing on ladder. I am playing Colton, the same deck that Colton's playing, but I'm playing um, Log Fireball rather than Snowball Poison. Although maybe I want to switch the Snowball Poison one. Because I've been having some trouble with um, air decks. Rich, I hear you, but why are burritos so much better than tacos then? That's a good question. Um, mostly because of all the stuff that you can fit inside of a burrito. 1534 on the right hand side. No candy currently behind the longtime Clash Royale Pro. Colton, though, has not yet found that big win on the day. Oh, Luke, thank you very much for using the code. Yeah, guys, use code Richard a chance. Do really appreciate that. No candy now. Back in the game. And Rafid, we just talked. You don't need to. You can enjoy. You can enjoy Cashman. You can enjoy me, but we don't need to hear evaluations of anybody. Speaking of Cashman, there's his link. Go ahead and watch him for the Ladam streams later today. Colton in the lead for the moment, except for there should be one more. Oh, the mortar does not pop off. Second mortar down. And that's a big wall breaker connection on the left hand side. Colton now way in the lead here with the lane switch. Spears now to pressure some more, gonna force out the bar barrel. Bar barrel goes inside, and oops, what a what a interesting place to put a poison there from Colton. Interesting choice. Miner goes to the front this time. Good variation on miner placement out of Colton here. And needs to get one more poison down. Has to play some defense here first, though. Fireball in. And the tick's coming down. And Colton almost gives up that tower. Instead, does get the dub here. Has anyone used Wizard yet? Gus the Goat, not in NA. In EU, we saw quite a bit of it, but not in NA yet. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Wubba Dubba Dubbify. I hate all other CR streamers. <laughs> all right. And before the, the, the Super Chat disappears, one more shout out to the Treeline09. Thank you so much again for uh, for that support. And I promise that some of that 20 bucks you spent you sent me will go to Edible Gold Leaf, as, you, uh, as you've talked about in your, in your Super Chat. Definitely appreciate that. Colton, the CCGS North American qualifier and one of the top CCGS players a uh, longtime Clash Royale pro gets his game win here and a better use wizard says someone I'm surprised that Mother Witch doesn't get played with all this swarm and GUIs yeah Mother Witch is just a little bit little bit weak though that's the only issue with, with Mother Witch um, let's see um, Rich has Colton played a pro competition since Seattle 2019 um he played on no tilt. He played on the U.S. He was on the U.S. roster for no tilt worlds in 2020. Tio Rio, why, are I not, why am I not streaming this on Twitch as well? Because restream crapped out the other day. I might go ahead to go back to dual streaming again, but honestly, I'm just not a huge fan of Twitch overall anyway. Um, Rich, um, have the the pair. They have a pair of um, called whiskey shots with Satan. Yeah, those are good ones. I might get those ones too. The the names for the for for um, gooders are actually phenomenal. That's one of the fun parts about them. Link to the groups. Um, I don't actually have a link to all the groups, but again, um, if you find 
Uh, when you couldn't find a say, find what to say, the Colt, Colt in the CCGS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Good point. Um, do you have, have any decks you absolutely hate going against? Um, anything with anything with Barb Hut, and I just can't stand playing against Golem. Um, Colton wasn't in CRL 2020. No, he was in CRL 2019. Then he played No Tote Worlds in C in, in 2020. Sometimes I might misspeak here. Um, so Pro Bro says, please go back. I honestly hate YouTube streams. I don't know why. The people who love Twitch love Twitch, but I just Twitch. Here's my big thing. Um, one, I have to do Twitch. I have to dual stream, uh, which I which lowers quality a bit and runs the risk of the dual stream crapping out. Um, two, Twitch does not support mobile gaming very much at all. They're really and YouTube supports mobile gaming like crazy. So I'd rather be a part of YouTube. Also, I don't want to be a full-time Twitch streamer. I don't want to be a full-time streamer. Um, I like streaming these events, and then when these events aren't happening, I make YouTube content. But uh, I'm not going to, like, be on Twitch really hard for two weeks and then be off Twitch for three weeks and then be so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Um, so there you go. Hey, Adam Doctor, thanks for hanging out here. Waiting for our next matchup here in a moment. Um, I might dual stream again. Maybe I'll test it out tomorrow. We'll see. But, um, yeah, I just... Not a big lover of Twitch overall. Um, Jeffrey Grandetti, Rich, you're a great caster. I thought about quitting to rule and become a Clash Royale god. I, I'm an infinitely, I will always be a better caster than a than, than player. Do I have plans to join a good clan for CRL? Um, I have my own clan, and I don't know. I might offer some rewards to my clan for CRL. Who knows? That might be a thing. No candy. Has no candy played great? You know what? Oh, they they, they won't have it updated yet because they're updating after at the end of the day. Man, I really, I want to see if no candy's played graveyard. He's played graveyard almost every deck. Almost every deck has been graveyard. What's my favorite bridge? Probably the left one. Good question there, Mance Raider. Cannon card to the left hand side. 1998 to 2261. Um, how can you join my clan? Find it. There you go. Graveyard into the left-hand side. Spears low here for Colton on defense. Skeletons high to help out. Oh, he did play Eagleum. That's right. He played Eagleum Battle Healer one game and got brutalized. Solid control there from this exchange by No Candy. Although it gives up a mortar connection with the low play of the cannon cart. EQ and Firecracker take care of business pretty easily. Colton pretty firmly in control here. Now, guys, um, those of you who are looking to play CRL 2021, take a look at the deck that Colton's running, right? A lot of you, oh, that's a big cannon cart connection from No Candy. Huge cannon cart connection, and just like that, No Candy only Wi-Fi back in the lead with 15 seconds left in regulation. As I was saying beforehand, if those of you who are looking to play CRL 2021 and trying to figure out how to get that top thousand ladder finish, one of the best advices, piece of advice I can give you, especially if you're trying to um, do on a budget and all that's going to be tower down. Not the greatest advertisement right now for the deck, obviously. Um, but, uh, and that's going to be a game number two win here for No Candy Only Wi-Fi going to game three here in a moment. Um, so be a bit of advice for you guys, you know, a lot of people, anyone, like I said before, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that link in the chat here a couple of times, CRL 2021 open to anybody, top 1000 ladder finish qualifies you for that month's competition, and there are eight of those through this year, starting in February, this, this ladder season through the September ladder season for CRL 2021. Um, you qualify by making top 1000 ladder, and if you're like, well, Rich, I don't have a max deck, I can't do it. Focus on leveling one deck. 
focus on maxing one deck and focus on maxing a free to play to play friendly deck. And there are a lot of decks that are highly free to play friendly that have very, very few hard to level cards. Most of you who are serious about the game probably put a lot of effort into leveling your log overall. So great, keep on pushing that log. Um, obviously the the season pass, the, the pass royale is the easiest way, is the best bang for your buck in terms of um, getting cards to level up your deck. But you can go towards some of these super free to play friendly decks. And the one we just saw uh, Colton running there is one of the more free to play friendly decks in the game. Um, let me go take a look at that one again. And I think I will do a little breakdown of the of what cards are actually in there. Give me one second here as I bring up some deck information. Let's go ahead and jump into game number three. So if you're trying to go and level up a deck for C to be able to be compete uh, in CRL 2021, and you want to keep it pretty free to play friendly. First of all, pick a deck that only has one legendary. Is the best way is number one. If you already have a legendary, it's in a pretty good position. Like if you want to go with one that's minor and log, for example, go ahead and do it. Um, but the thing I would really avoid is is epics. Um, obviously, don't do a lot of legendaries because that's super hard. But people play a few, uh, far too many epics. Colton here going minor wall breakers with the Inferno Dragon, or the Inferno Tower, and no candy going with a variation. Um, not Graveyard, obviously, because Graveyard is banned, so Bowler Prince Arrows. No candy, finding ways to play sort of his favorite deck. Um, that that psych, that motorcycle deck that we just saw out of um, Colton is a really, really good free-to-play friendly deck um, that you can level up fairly easily. It, only, it has five commons, one rare, one epic, and one legendary, right? So... You have uh, you have only just the one legendary in that uh, in that log, and then the one epic in the tornado. The rest of it, rares and commons. So pretty easy to push that one up and make it viable for a higher ladder spot. Um, you can do minor loon, but you know with barbarian you're getting into the two epic territory. Log is one of the safest legendaries to level up, to focus on leveling up because it can fit into so many archetypes. Inferno Dragon down, and a, uh, Inferno Tower. Second time I called it Inferno Dragon. And Inferno Tower, of course, against somebody who plays a lot of heavy cards like Bowler and Giant. Smart play from Colton. What a weird deck choice here from No Candy. Did he just put in a Prince for a Graveyard and that's it? Wallbreaker's left-hand lane. Only one of them will get stopped. And Mega Minion takes some damage. I have not seen the final card yet from No Candy. Very curious to see what he's actually doing with that one. It could be Inferno Dragon, but it seems redundant with the Prince in that deck. Inferno Dragon would make sense if he just took out Graveyard and put in Prince. Um, 2.6 is very free to play friendly, says Mance Raider. It's trash, but free to play friendly nonetheless. Yeah, and if you're good enough with 2.6, you can push top 1,000 ladder. And it is Inferno Dragon. So, No Candy just took his deck and put a Prince in there. Weird. So weird. All right. Zap comes in. Prince going to connect to the Inferno Tower. This is going to be a good push here from No Candy. I mean, No Candy with one of the weirdest choices. And he's currently in the lead with 80 seconds left. Minor to the back on the right-hand side. Bowler not going to be in cycle. Arrows are available, though. So Colton going to set up for defense here. And that's a lot of elixir on the board. I don't love the knight placement from Colton because that's going to give the Prince the chance to sneak away on the left-hand side. Minor comes out, but Giant gets away. Somehow, no candy-only Wi-Fi is going to win this with an absolute pile of nonsense. Like, if you went to a store and said, please 
may I have some nonsense, and handed them $100, they would hand you the deck that No Candy Only Wi-Fi just won with. Copy deck bug, maybe, but Graveyard was banned. I want to know, I want No Candy to come in chat and tell us what the heck that was. That was, that was ridiculousness. Rares are so hard to upgrade. I have one max hog ride at a rest are all level 11. Um, rares are hard to upgrade, which is why, again, you want to go with a, a deck that has lots of commons and only has one or two rares at most, right? That's part of why um, log bait was so popular for a long time, although it took both the log and the princess. All right. Where's no candy? No candy only skill says five to two. But that's not no candy. That's, hold on, is that is that no candy? The five and two is that? Um, that was my deck before GY came out. Says no candy only skill. So no candy in the chat goes. Says that was your deck before graveyard existed. So you just like took out Prince and put in graveyard. <laughs> I mean, respect I guess for winning that. Um, crazy, absolutely crazy. Ooh, there's a little. I need, I need a haircut badly. Look at this little. Let's go. This little. This little piece of. This little. I don't know what to do with this tuft of hair right here. What do I do with that? All right, now it's fine. Here we go. Let's jump into our next matchup. Attack and sweep. Let's go. Ryan Olson. I love Clash Royale. Nice, dude. Probably good to have one epic and one legendary because of tokens. Yeah, Niels. I think that's probably a, a good point. You just want to limit it. You don't want to get too super crazy with all those. Um, hey, so you don't want a ton of epics. You don't want a ton of... A ton, you, you, again, I think one epic, one legendary is probably a good number. But there are a couple pretty good free-to-play friendly decks. You want that four to five... You, you really love it to be like four or five commons in that deck. And that's going to be a pile of damage. Sweep here... Going with a little Chen variant and absolutely blowing that tower out of the water. Latak and Sweep, both undefeated, 2-0. Oh. Of course, one of them will not be that after this best of three is over. You talk about that unpredictability. Royal Giant in the pocket. NATO to the opposite lane. I don't love that NATO choice. I understand why you make it. But I don't love that NATO choice. Not here. Because now you just give that King Tower a ton of damage. Latak just sets up in that left hand lane. That right hand, that left hand tower of sweeps is in trouble. That's for sure. You know, there's a, there's an RG, there's a, there's a Hog Rider EQ variant that's actually pretty good if you're trying to um, to max a deck out fairly quickly. But I think that I think that EQ motorcycle deck might be the best one in terms of free to play value. There is a Hoggy Q variant that I think is also pretty easy to level up, as long as we're we're talking about that. It is, of course, two rares between those two. RG to the right hand side. Latak might. No, he's not got this tower now. That's a GG. Sweep with a little Chen variant, taking game number one in this matchup. G, G, well played. So, talking about Hog EQ, and again, I, I, I would typically suggest that you focus on Log as your your, your first Legendary to max. Um, obviously, everyone's requesting it all the time, but Hog as your first Legendary to max is almost always the right call. Um, Log just fits into so many cheaper archetypes. Um, there are some Hog EQ variants that are not very, that don't have any Legendaries, but pretty much all of them are going to have at least one that log. Um, but 
you know, there, there's a couple of Hoggy Q variants where you go, there's the Hunter version. Of course, that has three legendaries in the EQ and the Bomb Tower and the Hog Rider. Anyway, that's what I focus on is, is A, find a good free to, free to play friendly archetype to go after, and B, level cards, level cards that have some variance in what decks they can be put into. So if the meta does shift drastically, which it won't for three months this season, guys, keep that in mind. Now you have some ability. A Jeffrey Granddaddy saying, do we think only Wi-Fi doesn't really want candy like ever? He must hate Halloween. You're probably right. Sneaky Kicks say, what's up, Richie? One of the reasons why I love watching CRL. Oh, thanks, Sneaky Kicks. And I don't. I wonder what kicks you're rocking. When I was a, when I was younger and um, had, m I have I make more money now, obviously, than I did when I was in my 20s. But in my 20s, I didn't have any real expenses because I was, you know, living like I was in my 20s for cheap. And so I spent all my money on, I spent all my extra spending money on sneakers. Had some nice pairs of, I, I still have them. Have some nice pairs of AF1s. Um, I just got rid of some, some old creative wrecks. And then uh, I have a really nice pair of DCs um, that were an exclusive for a skate shop down in Southern California. And only 100 pairs made in the low tops that I got, which are pretty rad. Sweep looking like his giant double prince. So Sweep goes from the, a little Chen variant to what is probably giant double prince. Again, very difficult guy to game plan for. Latak looking like he's going Lava Miner here. Sam saying, perfect recipe for a free-to-play deck is two legendaries, one epic, one rare, four commons. That two leg leggies, though, does, does make it hard. And here goes Lava Hound from the attack. I asked both these guys what their go-to CR snack was, and they had very different answers. Uh, Latak is uh, talking about having no candy. Latak's favorite candy of all time is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, and I, it's hard to argue against Reese's as being a great choice. Um, Sweep does not eat or drink before playing competitive matches because the nerves make you feel like you need to go to the bathroom. And he'd rather be able to stay focused and not have that in the back of his head. So not Giant Double Prince. It's going to be, once we saw the mini P.E.K.K.A., obviously we're going into uh, the Giant Sparky variant. And of course, Sparky comes down right as I'm talking about that. What is Little Chen variant, says Chime. Little Chen, um, I don't know if he was running it before... CRL World Finals, but at CRL World Finals ran that no big spell Royal Giant Prince, like the Royal Giant Bait Deck. And that's the little Chen, little Chen kind of started that, the no big spell Royal Giant Bait. Little Chen, of course, of Nova Esports in CRL East slash CRL China. Easy control of the Sparky here by Latak. Big thing, guys, for trying to get your deck leveled up for CRL 2021 is focus on a deck. Don't level up a bunch of stuff you don't need just for the tower. Some people saying four commons at most, sure. Might be another, another theory. And that's going to be tower down left-hand side. And we're going to game number three here. Latak, not making it easy for sweep. Winner will be in control of the group at 3-0. and I'm looking at the chat here for a moment. Ah, my nose is really itchy as this cold continues. Um, best is two epics, say some people. Some people say two legendaries and two epics. The 
The big one is commit to a deck. That's the big one. Commit to a deck and commit to a deck that you can pivot off of if the meta shifts for some reason. Of course, you have three months for this meta. Which, honestly, people talk about they want the balance changes more frequently. With, with CRL being ladder-based, less frequent balance changes are actually better for the community. You might go, oh, but I want it to change, and I want this, and I want that. But the reality is that if you spend... You, you now have a three-month window for that deck that you spent so much time and effort and maybe gems to level up, you now have a three-month window to play in that deck as opposed to every month maybe your deck gets your legs chopped off. So it's now that, that ladder is so critical, it's actually better so that, that they're going to be um, reducing how frequent we're going to be doing the, uh, the balance changes. Ugarte, am I welcome to your boys? Yes, you are. I'm um, cold. Yes, I have a I have a cold. Baby boy Slayton is two year, almost two and a half. And if you don't know anything about toddlers, they are, um, as Louis C.K. once put it, tiny buckets of disease that live in your house. And um, yeah, he has given us both a cold, myself and Mrs. Slayton. And we, uh, yeah, I got the drip and I got the drip. <laughs> so there you go. And I don't live in L.A. anymore, guys. I live in Texas now. Um, let's see. All you do is play classic challenges now, Robin Loop. Well. Ladder if you want to play in CRL. Um, Balloon is a great first card to max. Lumberloon with Bat Scarmy, Inferno, great deck. Sure. Yeah, it's one of those questions of like new season every month. You say it's frustrating to have a new season every month, but same meta forever. Yeah, Tio Rio, but here's the interesting thing is that balance changes every three months is better for the free to play community. If you are a free to play or not big spending person, um, then. It's better for you to be to have less frequent balance changes. Frequent balance changes benefit the benefit players who uh, who invest in the game more than those who don't. Yo, Texas. Yeah, I'm in Austin. We just moved. We we, we decided the, we were we were visiting here. We rented a house here for a few months to visit family and be closer to family, with everyone being locked down, and then decided to stay here. Will I ever get a Texas accent? Probably not. Austin doesn't really typically have a big draw to it. I have family in Houston that has, like, the big draw. Um, Sam McAnish, do you like living in Texas more than L.A.? Um, aspects and aspects of L.A. are better. This depends on what you're talking about. But there are certain things about L.A. that I certainly appreciate more. Um, what if your deck needs a buff? Then it's a longer of a bad deck with the new balances. Yes, but you have time to, to, to pivot to a different deck. We missed a match between Borlax. Yeah, Borlax and Steven took place off-stream. Borlax won 2-0. Some of these matches are off-stream for time constraint purposes. They should call it USA region, not NA. Well, Canada's in it, so that wouldn't be fair. Isn't Austin unique as far as Texas goes? Yeah, Austin is pretty pretty different as far as Texas goes, for sure. Um, Alexander Marcados, your one max card is Bomber. Thoughts? Um, good luck. <laughs> That's all I got for you there. So, our first true staring contest of the day. And while we're waiting for it, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, do that. Also, we are at 422 likes. Let's show the organizers and Clash Royale, how much we really want there to be more fun stuff here in North America. First day of EU, we broke 1,000 likes. Let's see if we... I'd love to break 1,000 likes for the first day of NA. That'd be super cool if we could do it. And sweet going Barb Hut. Whoa. Oh, is he going e, um, Electro Giant again? Yeah. So Sweep favors the Barb Hut with Electro Giant, apparently. Interesting. And that, wow. Look at the Electro Giant just run through those barbs on the right-hand side. Clone on the left-hand side here for Latak. Nato pulls all that together. And that's still going to be a nasty push on the left-hand side. Oh, I guess the Ice Wiz will clean that up pretty nicely in the end. Yep, never mind. Ice Wiz does a good job. What is my favorite emote? The Wizard Blowing Out the Flame. It's my favorite emote. Yeah, I, don't, I, I do not like Barb Hut in general.
And this would be hard for Clone against Ice Wiz, Baby Dragon, Nato. Hey, Alpha Moriarty in the chat. I haven't seen Alpha Moriarty in a long time. Good to see you, bud. And second bar putt down, clones right into it, does attack. NATO cleans up a whole lot of that. And this flying machine has to get a response. Ice Wiz goes to the Hunter, which is good for Latak. He does get one shot there, but going to be difficult. Of course, this is a, an, op an opportunity here where he could get some in, but between the Electro Giant, the Ice Wiz, the NATO, uh, and, and, and a Heal Spirit here too, Sweep certainly... Staying unpredictable. Hey, Sakina Fuzzby, you watched you listen to a little bit of crime. But I hope you're enjoying it. Two cannon carts down from the tack, now a giant skeleton as well. And here comes a big clone. That Electro Giant's gonna get wiped out very, very fast. NATO tries to stop this one. Oh my word, look at the tower damage coming in here. This is going to be Latak taking the game, I believe. That's it. Latak takes the game. GG, well played. Clone OP. Latak now 3-0 and oh in the group. Your leader at the moment. Latak out of Atlanta, Georgia. Do I think Heal Spirit come back to its old stats? I don't think so. I think Heal Spirit... Um, they'll do something with it, but I don't know what. Um, let's see. Uh, Maj Majlinda Tashi. Rich, you are so underrated. You should have at least 100k subs here as part of a main part of commentary. Oh, well, you know, we're on our way. You know, I started this. I started really putting a lot of stuff on this channel back in the beginning of this year, and I was under 2,000, and now we're to almost 17,000. So we're over 16,000, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, I'm already in, I'm already in a clan, Max. But thanks for the invite. Hoggy key was broken, says Loop. Yeah, well then, guys, level it up for your ladder play, huh? Um, let's see. Yeah, good job, good job for attack. Have some tea, Rich. Voice is choking. Yes. Let me let me see if Mrs. Slayton can 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 tea me, because that would be super helpful. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on, let me double check here. Um, oh, she's. She's actually away for a moment. Well, no tea for the moment. Hold on, let me go ahead and get some water in me. Mm, and uh, a little trick here, a caster's trick here, guys. I'm, I'm, this is best used um, when you're on a program that has uh, that has breaks in it. But Fisherman's Friend, this is... Here, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Fisherman's Friend. <clears throat> this is the throat lozenge that I use the most. I started using these back in my mixed martial arts broadcasting days, and they're really good when you're in a when you're when you're um, on a broadcast that has breaks in between in between you being on camera or you you casting, right? Whether it's whether it's commercial breaks or whatever it is, because you can get one of these in, but they're also very easy to chew. So you put them in and get as much benefit for your throat as possible, and then if they're like, oh, you're back on air in 30 seconds, you can chew it very quickly and get rid of it. I'm as opposed to having to spit it out. And these things also hit hard. Fisherman's friend, that's a little um, commentator's trick for you. You're looking for the for the jam when it comes to throat soothing whatever type stuff. Colton with some bridge spam have not seen much bridge spam at all in this tournament. And Colton so far way ahead with it against Mini Minter running the minor wall breakers. My favorite legendary card? Mm. I'm trying to max Royal Ghost right now. I think he's super cool. Are they sell his local pharmacy? He's never heard of it. Yeah, um, DC the boss. They, if you go to like where there's the throat lozenge section, they're usually in a, in a small box. I know like Walgreens carries them. I think CVS, I think CVS carries them. You know, you gotta really search for them though sometimes. 
and wall breakers to stop the P.E.K.K.A. connection. Nice work there from Mini Minter. And now Miners to the back. Magic Archer gets damage on the left-hand side. How is your throat not burned to the granite? Those little things are spicy. Dude, that's why you go with them. Fisherman's friend, dude. It's the jam. You can also order them online. I, I sometimes will order, like, big packs of them. Like, big boxes. They come with multi-packs. That's what I was going to do. I was, gonna, I, I was trying to remember what I was going to order on Amazon. I'm going to order a whole new, a big order of these bad boys. I've returned. Cash man not streaming. You're going to leave me for for cash man? I guess, I, I guess I'm okay with that. But you missed the end of the uh, of NA Group A Day 1. Thomas Rogers saying shocker. Wallbreakers again. Wallbreakers have not been played that much today. It's been a graveyard day. Wallbreakers have been a, around a ton in this tournament. But today has not been overly wallbreaker -y. Magic Archer not getting geometry here. 857 on the left-hand tower as we go into sudden death overtime. Colton does have the lead over Mini Minter here in game number one. But Mini's done a pretty good job of uh, locking things down. That's a good Magic Archer here. Royal goes to the right-hand side. Bandit, Magic Archer to the left-hand side. And Mini Minter forced to defend with just the bats on the right-hand side so that he can focus on the left, but takes a lot of damage here. 10.20 to 8.57, final 80 seconds approaching. EQ stands for Earthquake there. Um, Mike, uh, Michael. Miner to the back, Wallbreaker's up front. Magic Archer does stop them. Royal Ghost can work on that defensively. But just like that now with the poison value, it's going to be a lead here for Mini Minter. Colton should go left hand lane with some pressure here as well. Yes, he does. There we go. Battle Ram comes out, dual lane pressure here. Royal Ghost will connect on the right hand side. And Mini Minter again has to make a choice to eat that. He's ahead right now by 20 HP. Pekka goes to the back, mispredicts the play here. But now it's going to be a healthy counter push coming in from Colton. Final 40 seconds on its way. And good Magic Archer there by Mini Minter. Tesla going to be taken down by the Magic Archer as the P.E.K.K.A. goes deeper in enemy territory. Miner does not get caught, though. e -Wiz comes out front. Poison working as well. Did he stop these wall breakers? He barely stops them. 2 HP. Magic Archer not on tower. Is the Miner going to steal it before it can happen? The Poison gets in 84 HP. Mini Minter almost put up the closest win of the day, but Colton does get it done in the end. And here we go. So again, here's uh, I was telling you guys. So what a what a what a, bro, what, a what a what a brutal cut here. But yeah, I was telling you guys about the. Here we go. This is Fisherman's Friend. Original. There's also like a maximum strength version, but I couldn't find that in the store the other day. They look like this. There we go. They look like this. I'm gonna break one in half here. You can see how. Actually, they're kind of hard to, harder to break in half than I thought. I guess these are newer ones. Oh, there we go. Now broken in half. So yeah, broken in half. You can see that they they got they kind of die pretty easily. But yeah, throw those in. And you can keep in your mouth. Like they, they work pretty quickly. They're very, very powerful. But then if you have to go back on broadcast, you can chew them really quickly and be good to go. So that's why they're very popular amongst, uh, amongst people who are on air for a long time. Because you can get them in during a commercial break. Boom. Help you throw it out. Back to business. What a great game that was, guys. Let's see, how much more do we have today? Let me double check some things. Let me go ahead and check the schedule for today. We are currently on Colton and Mini Minter. Which is our second to last game. I think we have... Um, oh, Latak versus Stevens being played off stream. So this is actually the last match of the, of the day. I didn't realize we were already there. So this is the last match of the stream. Because Latak and Steven is off stream. Oh. Oh, good to know. They're really strong burns a bit. What do they taste like? They taste like they work. Let's put it that way. Rich with infomercials again. Just trying to help you guys out, dude. Here we go. Colton up one. On Mini Minter. And now I just crushed him, swallowed him, and boom. Wallbreaker's right hand side for Colton. Oh. 
And guys, we are 34 likes away from 500, so we couldn't hit the thousand today. But we are right around, we are right there. Let's see if we can hit 500 before this stream is over. If you're enjoying NA. Give a little support here. Why are some matches off stream? Um, for time for time constraints. So that we finish in the appropriate amount of time. Cannon Cart connects here for Mini Minter. Minor Bats counter push here, though. Is Snowball available? No, it's not. The Knight picks up. And those Bats will get on tower now. Snowball has to come out, and now the Wall Breaker's behind. Great, great push there by Colton, and just like that, he's back in the mix. So first minute, 40 seconds of gameplay away in this game number two. Colton does have the advantage. NATO is the ban, which you can understand why going minor makes sense for Colton. With a NATO ban, you can immediately start varying minor positions. And this minor goes to the opposite side now. Colton with opposite lane pressure here. Sets up the Inferno Tower. Wonder what it is about Mini Minter that made Colton go Inferno Tower rather than Bomb Tower in this matchup. Defensive Wall Breakers had to come out. And Mega Minion connects. Cannon Cart connects. Graveyard down. And this should be a GG. We're going to go to game number three, folks. Minor wall breakers to the right won't be enough. And we'll see if Mini Minter can take control of second place. Or if Colton can steal the win away from him today. But we're going to game three. We'll see what Colton's ban is in just a moment. Didn't realize we were already on our last match of the day. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Take a look at the chat here for a moment. That's kind of sat us open for three hours. Well, we're going to be almost three hours here. Two and a half at the moment. Just double check something here. The classic, Fisherman's. In Halloween, we have a popular commercial with a rough guy crying, saying strong stuff that Fisherman's. Fun fact. Oh, I didn't know it was so popular there, too. Yeah, Fisherman's friend, dude. Again, not a. Sp I don't. I don't have. Maybe one day Gooder will sponsor me. Who knows? Um, but I just have things that I like, and I'll share them with you. And yeah, peep, this is again the fisherman's friend. I'll go ahead and throw it more time. I love these. I've been using them for over for over ten years now. Show chat. What on stream? No. Why would I show chat on stream so you guys can say ridiculous stuff and have it show up on the official stream? Nah. Uh, you can show the chat. You can watch it. Hello from Utah, USA. Loreen, I don't know why, but the way that you phrased that makes it seem like you're pretending to be from Utah. Like you're not from the U.S. at all, and you're pretending you're like, Hello from Utah, USA. Hey, like it sounds like you're Borat trying to pretend that you are trying to fake being from Utah. I don't know why. That's the vibe I got. So wait, Sansom is... is no, no, those, oh, sorry. Those are sponsors. But those are sponsors of the event. They're not my sponsors. Those AppGrade, Elgato, Samsung, Lotto, those are all sponsors of the event overall. None of those are my sponsors. Things that I show on stream are just things that I like. And if, if I like something, I'll share it with you. Maybe you'll like it too. Uh, Joy, glad you're enjoying the streams. Rich, do, you have a, do I have a favorite Lava Loon player? Yeah, whichever one stop playing Lava Loon. Um... Let's see. Uh, Parker, is that someone's favorite Lava Loon player? Hello, yeah. Just the hello from, hello from Utah, USA. Yeah, it's just... It, does, it, does, it doesn't it doesn't track. Doesn't doesn't pass the, the sniff test, you know what I mean? Um, I'm really from... Oh, no, I really am from Leighton, Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. 
<laughs> okay, okay. I don't know why, Larry, but the way you phrased it, because you put the U, because you put the U, it's, it's it's the USA. That's what it is. You said hello from Utah, and I've been like, oh, hello, Lorene from Utah. But you said hello from Utah, USA, which that one amused me. Who's my favorite Expo player? Um, who's my favorite Expo player? Oh, who was the Expo player who used to be in who used to be in um, uh, Nomad of Musketeers? Why my brain my brain's short now? Some minor wall breakers again for Colton. Mini looking like lo like like um, balloon here. Crafter, that's my favorite ex expo player. Is Crafter. Took me a while to remember who who it was. But lemon tree's cool too. So six loon for mini minter. And that's going to be a good balloon connection for Mini. Big balloon collection for Mini with the recruit behind it, tower down. And that's probably, that's got to be GG. That's got to be GG. Hello from Macedonia. Hello, Macedonia. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, Britain. Hello, Chester, England. Hello, South America. Hello, all the, hello, all places. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think Colton's dead in the water here. Looks like Mini Minter's going to take this easy, easy dub. Lorene insulted. Why would you be insulted? Just putting U.S. putting U.S.A. on the back of that made it made it suspect. Hello from Lebanon, Lebanon. Hello, Lebanon. And of course, hello Utah. Wall breakers in. Three three split here. Hello from S Good Morning from Illinois says. <laughs> Hello Illinois. Romania too. Spain. Hello to everybody. Hello from your house, Sam. Hello's to everybody. Balloon to the left hand side. And uh, the High Inferno will pull. But Colton better put some damage on Tower Le Quick. Tries to go to the left-hand lane. Don't, he won't be able to do enough damage in time, though. Just complete sellout in that left-hand lane. He might get that tower, but he's going to lose the king tower here. And there you go. GG. Well played. Colton falling to Mini Minter with the three crown win. Hello from Moldova, Nick Moylan. I know some Moldovans. Colton playing minor wall breakers and praying Mini lose internet connection. Yeah, that was uh, kind of the hope there. Let's go ahead and take a look at your winner here. And you see the sad face from Colton. Not very sad. A little sad from Colton. Hey, you subscribed? Oh, thank you very much for subs, man. Do appreciate it. It's not over. He might lose connection. Boss 2020. Yeah, very funny. So we should have... We'll have our standings here in just a minute. Wait, why... Is it, it, this is not dual format. No, this event is not in dual format. This, this event is in ban on first loss format. Um... Australia's insane hello in case in case you bring its existence into in case you bring its existence into question. Well I know Australia is a place. Like, you know, from mythical storybooks. Hello from Berlin, USA. Alright, nice work. So I believe that's our last match of the day. We should get our um we should get our results here in a moment. Smoked CR, I just got here, what's happening? Smoked CR, this is, you've reached the very end of day one of the North American region for the Bren Chong Cup 2, the $40,000 event. That's a mixture of invited pros and open qualifiers. And speaking of open qualifiers, current leader in Group A, Latak 3-0 and o in match play. The open qualifier player, undefeated so far in matches after a really rough start. When you saw game number one, we thought it was going to be a bad day for Latak. Now he ends the day top of the group. Mini Minter behind him at three and one. Sweep and Steven G at two and one, rounding out the top four. That's the top four. Those four will make qualifiers if they can hold those positions in our second day of gameplay for the group, which will be back around, I believe, on Friday. No candy, Modaz, 
and the remainder of our group down at the bottom. They make that graphic go so fast. It goes so quickly, that graphic. I want that graphic to stay up longer so I can keep talking about it. Oh, we're still on Ravel there for some reason. I want that graphic to stay on, on, on for a little longer. Colton 0-4 so far, so it looks like he's probably out. Where is Anaban in the Ladam group? And speaking of the Ladam group, wait, are you the guy on the channel profile picture? Yeah, this is my channel, dude. Guys, this is my channel. I'm Rich Slayton. Have you ever watched Clash Royale League, a.k.a. CRL? I'm that guy. Um, and this is my channel. And I'm the English host, or one of the English hosts for the Bren Chong Cup 2. Uh, the other English host... Bren Chong oh, Cup now they're is now they're back. The outro video. All right. Your other host is Cashman. You can there's the link for his Twitch chat, uh, his Twitch in here. You can tune in in about uh, about an hour and a half. You can go to his chat right now, his channel right now. He is already streaming, and in about um, an hour and twenty minutes, the Ladam region will start. And so a lot of your favorite Ladam players uh, will be showing up there as well. Um, today's Ladam lineup is Anaban, Cody Go, Lich Pentakill, Yafo, Anton, Chiago, Henankava, and Lince. So. Again, you go to Cashman's link there on Twitch to watch Ladam Live. You can also come and watch the replay here on my YouTube in a day or two, in a couple of days. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe here. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. That's going to be 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 8 p.m. Central European time for Group B of North American action. Tomorrow in the NA region, Air Surfer, Allah, Bag, Brighton, Parker DeBoss, Kasim, Dread Unlock, and the return of C. McHugh. That should be very, very exciting. Excited to have that back here tomorrow. So uh, it's been a whole lot of fun, guys. Hope to see you guys back here very, very soon, especially tomorrow. Uh, I'm Rich Slayton, and what is this? Well, this is the best place for, the most fun place at least, for Clash Royale Esports. Manana, manana. Take care.